let's start tonight with matthew 28 matthew chapter 28 it's important that when you come to the house of god you come with a bible at the least you should have your bible on your phone or whatever device you have but at least you should come with a bible make it a habit to come with a bible and something to write even if it's to type on your phone or your electronic devices don't just put your hands in your pocket and come to the house of the lord and revelations continue to come that can change you but then you are not able to preserve when he showed john these revelations he said right for these words are faithful and true matthew chapter 28 i'll read from verse 18 to 20. jesus left us what we call and know to be the great commission he started with the 11 disciples but by extension is a mandate and is a command that is for every believer 18 says and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power some versions use authority the word there is exousia authority all authority in heaven and in earth is given to me go ye therefore i like the account of matthew go ye therefore and teach not just go and witness go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit 20 he emphasizes again teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even to the end of the world so we are given a mandate please listen everyone we are given a mandate not only to evangelize but to mentor nations to teach nations are we together part of the great commission is not just to win souls but to disciple them discipleship is a system of mentorship that causes you to conform to the life and the character of the mentor so we are mandated by god to not only evangelize like make sure that their eternal destinies are secured but to go a step further he says teaching all nations were mandated to disciple nations the word nation there does not just mean physical geographic territories alone it also means fears of influence are we together that we should take the message the life and the power of jesus to every sphere of influence and we should teach them to observe everything we have been taught he taught them certain things the secrets of the kingdom and he said take this truth to the nations teach them mentor them bring people to a point where they are not only saved but they are matured discipled are we together now it's very important to disciple nations means that certain things must be at work in your own life to qualify you to disciple nations i just wanted to start on this note number one to be able to disciple nations you must be a model a representation of god's intention for the people that means that you disciple people when you become what you want them to be are we together now yes if you want to disciple career people then you must sustain an ability to be excellent you must rise to the zenith the pinnacle of your career pursuit that way you become a model and a reference enough worthy to be emulated are we together if God is sending you to disciple people in ministry you must excel in a way and a manner that is both supernatural and is worthy of emulation 
if God is sending you to mentor people in the area of finances you're not going to mentor them being poor and hoping to be blessed you must become an epistle of what you want them to be are we together now so discipling nations would require that we become models epistles we become the points of reference so that the people can have an idea transformation is easy when there is a reference it's difficult to transform people if there is no reference if you want people to prosper by god you have to trust god to prosper yourself so that you become a model if you think there is an imbalance with finances for instance then become the correct model of it then it's easy for them to cut away from the imbalances are we together if you want to model the anointing removing the excesses then become it it is easy for people to become when there is a reference imagine trying to dress yourself and there is no mirror there you don't know what to adjust you don't know what to correct but when there is a mirror and better still a photo of what you are trying to look like then you will know what to adjust appropriately so you must be a model number two you must become a force and influence you will never be able to disciple nations if you are not a force are we together a force is an ability that can provoke change you must be a force a voice you must be an influence that means you must sustain the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies is God helping us if you are not a model you are not a force you are not an influence then the perspectives of God communicated to you will never spread to the nation and the region that you are sent let me tell you this this already means that if you love God and you truly want to see his glory fill the earth then it is important for you to find out the area that he wants you to mentor nations in and begin to contend for results in that area for yourself that's why we came are we together now yes if God is sending you to be a pastor of pastors to teach people the proper way of building and equipping the saints you're not going to do that with a small and weak and disorganized church you yourself not obtaining results let me tell you this i have grown to respect the power of results say results it is true that the end of all arguments is results there is always room for contention when there are no results and so when the bible god speaking by jesus mandating us to disciple nations the approach we are taking now is very difficult because we seldom have the results that we propose to the people are we together so i think the better approach is to not be in a hurry to reach them but to be patient enough to have the level of result that is undeniable incontestable and you can win a nation within a day this is the strategy for as long as we continue to propose things that our lives have not captured we will find out that the people will have legitimate reasons to doubt so we are here tonight not just because of ourselves to say lord a b c this area does not have sufficient result to let people see you in and through me and i'm here in this miracle service trusting you like naaman although i'm a captain of the syrian army i'm a valiant warrior but this other side step in for me is someone with me tonight all power there is a reason why he said all authority because witnessing will require authority it will require a basis for results we are not going to suggest to nations we are not going to step into systems and structures and just suggest we will need to influence the system to come in with something that works almost everyone here has or has used a phone and almost everyone here is not using the phone he or she is using as the first phone is that true that 
when the mobile devices came out and got to Africa we had all kinds of models that we now consider inferior what made us leave it they didn't force you they brought out something and showed you the excellency of that new gadget and it forced you to carry your own money and go to the market and insist that although I have a 5,000 Naira phone, I have been dissatisfied because someone showed me something that the phone I have cannot browse and so it does not sustain an advantage to connect me to the world from where I am and I have someone marketed another phone and it will make me hate something I once loved results are powerful they challenge people to change their minds results can make a man change his mind it is true come see a man the woman said at the well come see a man that has told me that means she had the ability to repent it's just that everyone who met her did not have enough result to convince her most people are not rebels the level of result it takes to persuade them is absent in our lives did you hear what i just said most people are not rebels most people who don't go to church are not that hardened we have not communicated a dimension of the life the power the grace and the possibilities of the kingdom enough to make them want it and so we minister Christ from a standpoint of extreme weakness and disadvantage. It's not force enough to draw people. Is God speaking to us now? Most of your family members, let me tell you this. For many of us, it looks very difficult to reach your family members because you look at the hardness of their hearts and wonder how will I break this ground? let me tell you something if God mandated you to reach them then you need to find out Lord what can convince these people enough for 5,000 men aside from women and children to climb up a mountain and stay three days without worrying for what to eat the parents were not irresponsible Jesus must have done something to them that even made food unnecessary and he took responsibility and said look i have to feed them because i'm sure part of the many things he taught them was the responsibility that comes when you become part of the fold of god and he said i have to prove what i just said so don't dismiss them that way and the disciples said you've put us in trouble now these people we we have wet their appetite and they expect a performance and jesus said that's all right and they got the young lad andrew brought a young boy with five loaf and two fish jesus said watch something now do you know immediately they ate it what was their response we will make you king whoever can feed us every day without begging caesar deserves to be our king no election could it be that this is why politics is hard in africa and nigeria a people came together and said jesus you must be king and jesus said i know it's because you ate bread but at least they were honest who will throw away a bread giver free to the point that 12 baskets were gathered i was once hungry now i'm so full i just look at the bread you will have to be king the same thing will happen in your family Regard, listen listen regardless of your all this um firstborn second boy is wonderful in terms of respect and honor but in terms of kingdom advance whoever has the ability to reveal jesus in a way and a manner that solves the needs of the people must be made king even if it is joseph the sun the moon and the 11 stars will bow they don't bow to age they bow to whoever if the sun and the moon bows then the person they are bowing to what is he that means he's neither the sun he's neither the moon he's neither the star what is the name of that person that the sun will bow to the moon will bow for this is the mandate of jesus it's not just to carry a tract and meet someone and harass him and while he looks at you and then you are done and you present a very miserable Jesus 
he will ask you one question you cannot answer he said let me let me go and ask god he said ah, but i thought he sent you either we are telling lies and just carrying out the ritual of religiosity or we truly want to disciple nations let me tell you where the carcasses are truly there the eagles work human beings have real problems they are not idiots except they don't find real answers they will inconvenience themselves to any level when men complain they are not complaining because of you they are using you to complain that there is not result enough to keep them in the days of the generals by 2 a.m for a service of six or seven people will gather there and not mind whether it is the sun or the moon or rain or whatever because they knew one encounter with these strange beings that were not like human beings their lives would change most of the people that knew the generals met them only once they didn't meet them many times but now we can be pastors over people for 10 years and nobody can reproduce our grace and you expect them to still be loyal people are not stupid my brothers and my sisters are we together disciple nations not by drumming people's faces and harassing them where the carcasses are there the eagles will no atm ever called your name once yet you cannot resist it when you pass and you see an atm even if you don't have money you have respect for it because of what is inside i watch people queue before something that is not a living thing and they are patient for a long time what if you are that atm that is the same way gentiles will come it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted above every other mountain and above every other hill listen and the nations will say come let us go let us go they were not invited they are advising themselves come let us go to the house of the lord he said there you will teach us his ways for out of zion shall proceed the law it's time for us to mentor nations with our results are we together now yes that the greatest businessman in zaria is a tongue-talking anointed christian everybody that needs him will follow him to church without invitation and sit down whether they like it or not that's how to mentor nations when you see someone who has what you are looking for rolling before god whether you know why or not you will start rolling first before you understand why he's rolling we are too weak to make jesus powerful and this is what we want to correct tonight listen let me tell you this there is nothing you can do with a man or a people that become a force when you have results real results replicable results it is impossible for a territory to deny your presence here's what Jesus said teaching in what we call the Beatitudes the principles of the kingdom he says you are the light of the world you are the salt of the earth he says you are a city not like a city a city that is set on a hill how can a city be on a hill men whom the earth was not worthy of a city set on a hill giving light men will light that candle and put it on top of a bush for a very long time pastors have made the church weak because they don't know what else to do when they are not saved they are the weakest in every society they are the poorest they are the whatever it is under the spirit of servitude within a territory i reject that for koinonia in the name of jesus christ that you are able to disciple and mentor nations God is giving us influence and granting us grace and when that influence comes people will be able to listen to you
you will say the same thing now that you said five years ago and people will cry hearing you not because more anointing was added to it more result is now backing what you are saying the same thing you said before are we together now yes everything they say about you is correct until your results prove otherwise everything if they say your god is weak they are right until your results prove otherwise hearing is my father glorified 15 and verse 8 john hearing brothers and sisters let us not be hypocrites for god's sake this is how god is glorified when ye bear much fruit when ye bear much fruit when ye bear much fruit my mother and my father when your children become the best and the most influential people within a city and are madly in love with god they will influence more people within a year than you will do holding a crusade in 10 years everybody is seeking for someone to reference his life after that's why we chase after musicians that's why we go online searching for people when people show certain things that we want even if we know they are lying we still follow them if someone decides to wear rags today if you see the money he has close to the rags tomorrow you too since you don't have the money you can start with the rags at least you can tear your cloth to look like it to give you hope that you will become like him we are making nonsense marketable because there is no result to back it I vow to myself and I vow before my God that I will never be a weak representative of the kingdom by every standard as far as the territories are located for my my spiritual impact is concerned we will have to do something for God that will make God beat his chest and say truly I have sons upon the earth that's why we are here that's why we are here and many times you will think that these things are just boastful statements no when a man speaks you need to look at the force back in him if it is your ability whether intellectual physical whatever then you are wasting your time but the power of the highest mary said how shall these things be seen that i know not a man and the angel said the power of the highest will overshadow you are we together now the mandate of jesus it's not more members the mandate of jesus is not a greater name for a ministry the mandate of jesus is not more people in a register the mandate of jesus is not more slaves loyal to a man called a man of god the mandate of jesus is that there will be people who understand the kingdom and love him and understand his system to be able to mentor and disciple nations your nation must look up to you otherwise you have failed if it's business if it's ministry if it's family whatever it is go and make disciples go and make disciples go and make disciples go and make disciples not go and have denominations go and make disciples That you should not give room for any unbeliever within your territory to hold a level of influence that will have to make you bend to God to receive their resources. No, sir. This is a message that the devil has fought for many years. And so many believers, especially we around the northern middle belt and part of the, we, we, we are not kingdom and we are not strategic in our understanding. We are morally sound, bless God. We love the Lord with all our heart, bless God. But we find out that our lives are empty, void of spiritual meaning because we do not know what else to do. So we seek God, we love him, we become anointed, we even fall under the anointing. But to what end was that anointing given? We don't know. And so we roam around and hope that the mundane things that we spend our lives on will give us meaning. Nothing else has the ability to give your life meaning than knowing that you are living your life according to purpose and that it is giving joy to the Father. In a few minutes from now, we are going to be celebrating dimensions of the hand of God, the miracles of God. You know why? 
we're doing this because we know that first we love the people but second it is a testament that's why it matters when unbelievers hear what god is doing when believers hear what god is doing thank god for it but the real impact is that what god is doing gets to the ears of the unbelievers because it will compel them are we together now you are gathered here tonight first because you love god he brought you but quite honestly because you are trusting god for various levels of supernatural solutions people have been here since monday tuesday wednesday families groups ministries people have traveled endured all kinds of things because someone told you or you heard it in a message that if you came here your life and your situation will change did you think they lied sit back and watch what god does with your life in a few minutes from now. So, that when you leave this place and go back as a man of god you will be surprised yourself the next time you see you will not come alone you will be too grateful to come alone when a mother comes here and sees what god does to her she will remember immediately that my stubborn neighbor's son that means they always wanted him change it's just that they had been looking for a place anointed enough to make them let me tell you i still say it again and again i thank god for posters i thank god for handbills please i'm in no way trying to demean them but nothing will cover the publicity that real power and real result creates people are too grateful rumors spread in overnight nobody paid for it and yet it goes round that's the same way the word of the lord can come upon you ah, i came for koinonia a program called the miracle service i just strolled there and my life changed overnight madam the next one is next month i don't have money you, you better look for money and you see people run around and come and receive and so our own assignment is to continue to stay with god to make sure that everybody that comes you take a level of fire that like queen of sheba you say half of this was not told me if we are not doing this this is just jamboree and a ceremony and a sin and wickedness because when people pay so much price and leave wherever they come from to come and sit down and then we entertain and make all kinds of noise and jargons and they go back again with the same pain we've wasted their time and we cause the heart of the father to bleed we make miracle walk promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are we make a miracle walker not even touch what I wanted to share as the message for tonight this year your life will change in the name of Jesus Christ this year your life will change by the power of the Holy Spirit it's true let those who laugh at you Ephesians chapter 3 please let me have your attention I want to share with you a powerful revelation that God put in my heart for this meeting and then we will pray mighty God we bless you Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 the Bible says now unto him please look up the Lord has been pounding this scripture in my heart and I need to teach you and show you and make sure that you get it as a revelation now unto him that is able to do everybody say able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think everybody say ask or think one more time say ask or think 
that means there are two ways listen carefully your petitions and requests get to god number one is through your prayer by verbalizing it number two is through your thinking your paradigm also is a prayer request it sends prayers to heaven the bible says god will do what you ask or think not ask and think that means when you are not praying and you are thinking you are still praying before god your mouth and your mind are also prayer warriors the only thing is that for many of us our mouths are better prayer warriors than our minds most times our minds pray nonsense and that's why you find out that the things that you desire you may not see the results that are consistent with your desires because there are two prayer warriors in your life one is your mouth let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart both be acceptable that means the words of my mouth can be acceptable but the meditations of my heart can cancel everything he is able to do listen carefully exceeding abundantly far above all i ask far above all i think it matters it matters that the word of god does not just penetrate our spirits alone the word of god must have an effect listen carefully you will never be a world changer you will never be usable in the hand of god until the word of god is able to influence your understanding influence you we're talking about fruitfulness you will never be fruitful this year just because a prophetic word came as powerful as it is you can limit god your mouth may be praying because you are told to pray but your mind continues to make your destiny unfruitful listen very carefully most of the miracles that we need i submit to you most of the miracles that we need are in the realm of our understanding and the realm of the mind much more than physical miracles we need a real miracle of a reconstructed understanding to be able to know god's perspectives this is the secret of victory this is how we win in this kingdom that's why the preaching and the teaching of the word is very important because they are the spiritual systems are located for bringing understanding when the word is preached and taught generally it brings you into a comprehension it influences your understanding and when your mind listen when your mind changes then truly your life will change it's true You are not truly free until your mind is free. No matter what else around you is free, if your mind is under captivity, then you are really in bondage. Are we together? Let me show you something. A revelation that God gave me for tonight. Luke chapter 4. We are reading five verses. Luke chapter 4. We we'll start from verse 14. Luke chapter 4. This is Jesus now. Luke chapter 4 and verse 14 after his time of fast and prayer the bible says and jesus returned in the power of the spirit into galilee and there went out a fame of him through the region round about 15. and he taught in their synagogues you see jesus was a teacher he was a teacher he wanted to give people understanding 90 percent of his ministry was teaching 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 he built the disciples by teaching the impartations happen few times most of their encounters was the teaching ministry of jesus that's how they became apostles the bible says being glorified of all 16. let me have your attention now and he came to nazareth where he had been brought up and as his custom was he went into the synagogue on the sabbath day and stood up for to read he's about to read isaiah 61 now listen and there was delivered to him the book of the prophet Isaiah. and when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written the spirit of the lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised just keep 18. see how many times the various issues required preaching 
there were three main issues in the ministry of Jesus that the solution was hidden in preaching not doing preaching number one very quickly that every time you met a poor man the solution lied in doing something to his mind the Bible says he had anointed me to preach not just to give to the poor he had anointed me to do something to their minds because the issue whether it is some version say meek it doesn't matter no matter how you see it it still requires preaching so when you see someone in a financial predicament God's recommendation is that that person is not yet free until the word of God is able to do something to his mind otherwise that person will remain in bondage how true bless someone who is poor in his mind a thousand times his mind would turn his life back to look like his mind when it has to do with the poor the secret to really helping them is to camp them under the wisdom of God's word and the Bible says to preach the gospel to the poor the next sets of people that require preaching amazing amazing this is where the apostolic and prophetic ministry in many regards has failed woefully the next set of those who require preaching are those who are captive in need of deliverance it didn't say to conduct deliverance it said to preach deliverance that means much more than driving the spirit entity in their lives and around their situations jesus is saying they are not truly free until deliverance is preached to them listen to my teaching the mystery of deliverance i call this deliverance through transformation that your mind is reoriented again to have spiritual understanding that keeps the door closed one of the things and and i thank god that this is a ministry that believes in the whole counsel of god shortly we are going to be praying casting out devils and just taking away these influences that stand the way of people but then the bible says that the journey to deliverance will continue being a cycle a helpless cycle to the point that it becomes a mockery until the preaching dimension not the laying hands dimension not the prophecy dimension the preaching dimension there is something that must be captured in your deliverance message that affects the minds not just the spirits and the bodies of men otherwise these spirits will make a mockery of you they will leave the people and return back because their mindsets have become strongholds the spirits have created fortifications around their thinking that will allow the spirit come back again are we together to preach deliverance not just to conduct deliverance i admit to you that it is here that the apostolic and the prophetic ministry in many regards has failed because of the charismatism that is around ministering to people seeing someone fall roll under the anointing you know when that happens it looks like it's an accolade on you as the man of god and so we enjoy it no matter how many times you must go through that rigor i'm satisfied provided it helps in making me shine but the bible is saying by and large the delivery will be tired <laughs> permit me my english that person is not going to except if it's a fresh impartation and the person must know the new grace that is different from last week's falling there's a lot of mess in the body of christ demons continue to make mockery of our ignorance many people are permanent gateways for the entry and the exit of spirits it was jesus himself that carried out the demonology lecture he didn't give anybody he handled that course by himself and this is what he taught us remember when jesus talks you listen he says when a spirit leaves a man that means spirits can leave men we know that apostles and prophets we god has helped us in that area we know how to make spirits leave men but the Bible says that spirit will go through dry regions seeking for a place of refuge. Are we together now? And then the Bible says not finding a place of refuge. Here's what the spirit will say. Remember the person had been delivered now and he's jumping in the church and he's happy. Hallelujah. 
doors are opening and the spirit is saying i'm coming back the spirit is saying i will go back like the prodigal son the prodigal son said i will arise and go back to my father the spirit says i will arise and go back to my house he's calling the person who had been delivered my house that means he's still he's still laying claims he comes back according to jesus and finds the house swept clean but empty everybody say empty say it empty there is a law in the spirit that anywhere there is void anything can feel it when there was darkness and void the holy spirit came to hover around it swept clean through deliverance by casting out the devil but then empty because the word contents that will fill that person and close the door permanently is not there he has not received the preaching dimension of deliverance to let you know that now that this spirit has left you are we together now to begin to educate you into understanding what christ has done for you and then to help you to be able to stand your ground like paul would teach in the book of ephesians supplying you all the spiritual arsenals that can keep you safe now that you are free it's not there so the spirit will route to anything anger jealousy and gladly stroll back into the person unfortunately jesus said no spirit returns alone it will gather seven others more dangerous than itself and return to the person so that the end of that person is worse than the beginning if you're with me say amen this is why there are many temporal miracles you hear people say i received a miracle a spirit left me and then i started this and then the situation gets compounded and it becomes worse again because the person does not or he has not been educated to see the relevance you see let me tell you this come the moment you cast a spirit out of a person or out or around a situation spirits are not only in people spirits are also in situations situations are bodies that spirits can possess are we together now yes so that situation or that body the spirit leaves but the individual listen carefully the individual is here standing and his mindset has not been changed has not been altered the mindset becomes a gateway that spirit enters back and continues to influence the person and when these spirits study the man of god and they know that the man of god may be well-meaning he may be very anointed but his word content is very low they no longer will be afraid even before you cast them they'll just go out and you will think it's a sign that you are getting more anointed it's a sign that they have mastered your ignorance and created a way of insulting you they will freely go and wait immediately after the grace they enter the person and continue to go so you see the labor it looks like this warfare is endless you will continue to cast out demons and demons and demons and demons forever whereas there can be victory established are you with me now That's why you can have a particular dream or series of dreams or all kinds of attacks and then you can have a strong season where there is an emphasis on the ministry or deliverance ministry or something like that and then the demons leave and afterwards the patience and the interest to allow deliverance be taught you is not there and these spirits will return they are stubborn spirits so said jesus they don't leave and go away even satan left jesus for a while and came back came back through peter came back through judas until he thought he caught jesus are we together the body of christ does not have the patience to allow the word of god let me tell you this if you are not teaching people you have to teach people the value of sitting to receive and to grow in the word the bible says let the word of christ dwell in you in all richness you are a man of god here please listen it is not so much about manifestation and rolling under the anointing and all of those kinds of things train your people to sit down and listen to the word of god and then train yourself to make sure you understand what you are teaching so that the people are not listening to what becomes poisonous to them if you're with me say amen 
when believers were saved in the early church they were not just left to go a few people were left without real spiritual follow-up and you saw what happened to them for instance in acts chapter 19 the bible says paul having passed through the upper coast he came and he found certain disciples supposedly and then he asked them a question he said have you received the holy ghost since he believed and they said we've not even heard whether there be any holy ghost and then he said unto what baptism then were you baptized and they said unto the baptism of john and jesus corrected them and said no the baptism of john was a baptism of repentance so that you will believe on who that will come and then they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus and paul laying his hands upon them the bible says they were filled with the holy spirit and began to pray in tongues and they prophesied they were 12 in number all of them that was a new level for them when you just back down a little you read from chapter 18 the last six verses the bible talks about a man called apollos a great man he was an eloquent man fervent in spirit mighty in scripture the bible says but he knew only the baptism of john and then one day he came for a meeting and then aquila and priscilla met him and then they expounded to him the way of the kingdom more perfectly and then he became more useful to the body because he now began to argue based on the new light that he had you must pray and cast away ignorance the worst oppression is not demonic oppression that the spirit influences you is that when the spirit saps your desire for the word so that you do not have time and especially for women of god it's possible to be reading the bible just because of the pressure i've been ministering right from saturday back to back every day up until yesterday dash in here to come tomorrow i'm back again to finish the conference you can imagine over 18 sermons within one week so it's easy i can be up and doing just studying the bible as though i have an interest but it may be that it's just for the formality of finding a sermon and these spirits watch out for these kinds of things are we together you prevail as a believer when your understanding is altered by the word of god it gives you an appreciation for excellence it gives you an appreciation for diligence it gives you an appreciation for knowledge it gives you an appreciation for value you see the all surpassing excellency of god's power it will make you need the holy spirit in your life it will damage ignorance from your life and strengthen you to be effective and remember the more your spiritual capacity is the more god can flow through you and from you to others this is how to disciple nations are we together this night so give us luke chapter 4 again let me finish up and then we'll pray mighty god so the poor need the gospel preached those in need of deliverance much more than the casting of the devil they need to understand the message that the bible calls preaching deliverance and then number three look up please to preach again the acceptable year of the lord king james says the acceptable year of the lord i think it's a new living translation that says to preach the year of the lord's favor the word acceptable year there doesn't just mean the day god has agreed uh -uh. it was a direct translation but it is the lord's favor to preach the lord's favor so those in need of favor is more than just laying on of hands it's more than just prophecy receive favor there is an a spiritual education a spiritual curriculum you must pass through to really walk in favor is one of the biggest mistakes again we make in church because we teach people that favor is unmerited that favor just happens when god wants to favor you but it's not true it's not true my brothers let me tell you this it is not true favor is merited there is a dimension of favor that operates as though unmerited but when you truly know what favor is and how it works you know that it is merited merited there does not mean everything even your obedience is done by the grace of god supplied you don't have the power to walk in it favor is not unmerited 
don't insult any man of god and don't look down any man of god you hear teaching and saying is unmerited that's not what i'm teaching you you may buy into his understanding and find out that we are saying the same thing but then i can tell you this if you are under this leadership and you want results in your life understand that favor is merited i've taught you this that favor is a child that a pregnant woman gives birth to right proverbs 13 and verse 15 good understanding give it or bring it forth favor and it says the way of the transgressor is hard good understanding is like a woman proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15 good understanding is like a pregnant woman she can give birth to a child and the bible names that child favor transgression is also like another pregnant woman that can give birth to a child and the name of the child is hardship hardship is predictable there is there is an exact gestation period and you give birth to something that you name unfortunately it's life that names it hardship that's the name of your child favor that's the name of your child so when you tell people favor is unmerited they just sit down and say okay so what do i do and then they just sit down and say okay god just favor me and nothing will happen most people have not tasted what the bible calls favor i've said it again and again that most of what we call favor is breakthrough favor is only favor if it is repeated if it happens just once in a while or once in a long while that's breakthrough that's not favor it's true are we together so when you need favor jesus is teaching us in the temple that you must be taught that there is something called the acceptable year of the lord ah. i know there's more that's found in you be careful be careful what becomes the foundation of your spiritual knowledge and don't be ashamed to open yourself for change many times we are loyal to our current level that even in the face of truth we would rather be loyal to where we are than sustain the flexibility to move to where we need to be i have absolute disloyalty for error i'm not ashamed when i find out that there is a need for adjustment and correction just because you held on to a, a truth or a light all your life the moment you find the truth you see your loyalty you feel like you are betraying your convictions and we will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in you and i will never yell will never settle for less One more time. We will never say, we'll never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. The same way many of us may have innocently learned that automatically demons just leave themselves out of you. It may be an honest knowledge you have sustained for a long time. You see that? by very well-meaning men and women of god from a very sincere heart that's why knowing god is powerful you need flexibility to know god because you will know things about him that will, it will be like deliverance from a cult now how do i come out of this knowing that all my life this is what i believed in i shared with you a story years ago about a gentleman fine smart man of god who for a long time held the view that look it was impossible demons cannot influence people etc etc and he held on to that and he was a very sincere person lovely fine nice gentleman and i remember when he came to see me in my room then as soon as i saw him i saw a spirit standing behind him that came with him 
and then i was i was trying to look for the most loving way to just tell him my brother you may need prayer no 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 no. i don't need anything i'm okay i'm all right i'm fine i'm this i said i understand i'm not about to argue with you but please this is what I'm... no 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 no. this person came for counseling something is obviously wrong with his life and now i'm seeing that this is what is wrong and the gentleman will just not agree and then i pleaded with him to give me a chance to pray for him and this guy would get up like 15 minutes later shouting and manifesting and talking on all kinds of things and then when i was done he got up i didn't look down on him i politely appreciated him for more than three days this gentleman could not be himself he went back according to him and carried his bible he kept sending me text messages apostle so what is the meaning of this now i believe this i believe that do you cry when you buy a better phone do you feel bad when you be buy a better phone? Don't be ashamed when you are open to truth that is new, but truth it is. Just because it's not something that has been captured in your experience. That's why you must have meekness and flexibility. The goal is not to create argument and to, no, 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 no. If I find out that what I believe now is wrong, I will be glad to repent and find out what the truth is and in all honesty come and tell you i apologize i've seen better now i will not be ashamed to say it but my brothers and my sisters let me tell you god has granted us the grace to prove some things and these things we teach are not suggestions are we together yes. favor will not come upon you just because you want it the gospel must be preached you must sit down and you must be taught the systems that activate favor and then when the teaching comes there is an empowerment is usually light and grace light grace light grace full of grace and truth 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 that's how it works when the truth comes upon you then the level of grace to demonstrate that dimension you have had is given to you is someone learning tonight i'm saying this because most of us are in these three categories tonight trusting god you came for a miracle service because you are tired of all the things that have happened around your life and are happening some of us have come because we are trusting lord can you look down on me with favor and i'm showing you jesus himself teaching at the temple that's why they marveled at him 20 let's look at verse 20 20 of luke chapter 4 we're praying shortly luke i'm um, 20 now I'm 20 let's look at verse 20 and he closed the book and gave it again to the minister so there was a man of god there before him and sat down and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him 21 let me add 21 and he began to say unto them these days this scripture fulfilled in your ears when you read down the bible says they marveled at him saying what what doctrine is this is this not joseph's son where did he learn this one from now you must know something new to rise to a new level what you know has brought you where you are and if you stay there you will continue to recycle your results you must contend for light and glory and truth that's why i sang that song and i will never settle for less i know there's more that's found in i told you for many years demons used to oppress me remember my story as a man of god I went to many people sincerely let me tell you this by god's grace i tell you this i'm a student of knowledge there are few people that study and read like me i say it with all humility and so i read lots of books that propose so many things and i walked in those things yet these spirits would not leave me as a man of god they would oppress me i would go to bed and they would oppress me sometimes even in the midst of fasting like it's happening to many of you I will round up the fast as I'm rounding up the fast the same experience will happen again I said what I mean what is this is it, will it be honest that I don't have faith eventually I found out what was wrong and God helped me in that area 
that's why I continue to trust God to help people in these areas may God may God grant you the grace to prove what you know Amen. not just to say what you know this is a prayer you will appreciate in the nearest future may God grant you the grace to prove what you know Amen. because the end of all argument truly is results consistent results are proof that mastery has been gained are we together and tonight the Lord wants to visit us like Benga shared is a buffet a buffet of fat things he has set the table before us for yours it may not be that there's an infirmity you are trusting god for but there is a level of favor listen god has declared by his spirit that this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness genesis 17 and verse 6 and i will make you exceeding fruitful he says and nations shall come out of you and kings out of your loins one of the keys i taught you that sponsor extraordinary fruitfulness is the favor of God this one everybody must cry it and you must receive it if every miracle service is dedicated to releasing favor it will be worth it because let me tell you my brothers and my sisters happy is a man whose jealousy the, the when the jealousy of God zooms on you you become a fearful wonder even to yourself it's true it's true you stand back and watch in shock and wonder and say god what are you doing it's not unmerited it is empowered but not unmerited there is an active contribution through knowledge and faith that brings it and tonight i believe that in the name of jesus christ within the few minutes we have a very quick work to do tonight there are many of us seated here the truth is that there are spirits around your life and behind the situations of your life. And it does not matter. Trust God that they will leave you. There are others, your miracle service began while I was teaching. Because now you are gaining understanding. So this is why these things continue to be repeated in my life. But there are others. The mountain that stands before you is a mountain of complete disfavor. If in three days no one helps you something is wrong the favor of God is not on you 72 hours is too much for heaven to not respond to you forgive me if this sounds arrogant you will know it's true I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you I will come to you I will come to you you get up in the morning Lord thank you and there's all kinds of favor daily loading you with benefits and I'm not just talking finance. Finance is not the only expression of favor. It's a needed one, but not the only expression of favor. When God lifts men to make your life easy, you are trusting God for a new dimension in the spirit. Someone goes out of his way and gets a book by an author you do not know and comes to give you and that book is teaching on the anointing in a way you have never seen. That's favor. It doesn't always have to be money. When we say favor, people think money. You are trusting God for a realm of the prophetic. And then God grants you access to a man of God you never would have had access to. And one impartation brings you into that realm. It is favor. The absence of hardship is the proof of favor. Let me sing this song again before we pray. Don't join me. Listen. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Favor found in Him. New levels of grace found in Him. That you step into a meeting as a man of God and you know that principalities and powers, 
yokes thrones dominions are about to be subdued it's not a suggestion you are not guessing you are standing from a pinnacle of light and no power in existence will sustain the ability to negate god's word upon your life a dear man of god i met you know while i was ministering great wonderful man just yesterday i met with him and he said apostle after a meeting and he said sir i've been trying to get a name for my company for weeks and for months i'm a man of god and i've been praying and i laughed because when something is within your power you see that within your power given to you by grace the same way a little child comes to say please give me pure water and you can bring out five naira because it's within your power there are some things after tonight it will be within your power yeah. it's true within your power to speak and change things within your power and i told him i said let's pray i said this night you will have the answer and by evening he calls me and says apostle i almost cannot believe this even as a man of god that i was sitting down and this is the name this is that and i told him congratulations and he said what is this and i told him that this is called the power of god the power of god is a force it produces changes the same way you are sitting quietly now your life is at the mercy of an anointing and within few minutes my brothers and my sisters I, I i never i never cease to marvel at what the anointing can do just like that just like in a twinkling of an eye and someone's burden has lifted for decades like that in in a moment and you're waiting for days in zaria will be worth it completely just like that please believe this if you're a worker in this ministry believe it don't get used to these things and allow people who come from somewhere to continue to receive and you sit down and say wow i know no let's not cheat ourselves let's be sincere god is able to do let me tell you it is within his power to surprise you tonight not just to give you miracles to surprise you it is within his power to begin to alter systems and structures this night not tomorrow this night this night the bible says every man should minister according to the measure of the grace of god given to you when you measure outside of the jurisdiction of the grace supplied it's called pride elijah said let him come naman elisha so that he will know not that there is a god in israel that there is a prophet in israel you would call that pride but the result showed it the same way you are a man of god now and in a few minutes if you are a man of god and you came here i want you to just get ready because what will come on your life it will lift you to a pedestal in the spirit that will surprise you you will walk in strange levels of glory this is by the spirit are you hearing what i'm saying now we're about to pray blessed be the name of the lord results are not acts of pride and arrogance they are acts of the grace and the mercy of god activated through knowledge so god takes you to a new dimension we are going to do a very we will trust god for a very quick walk i took out time to teach tonight because this is the real miracle the performance all of that is it, just a touch and all of that and one prophetic word but what you are hearing now is it this alteration that is happening not just to your spirit but to your mind find out how many impartation services jesus conducted you will be surprised there were few times one of which he breathed upon them received the holy ghost but most times he camped with them for 40 days all he was doing was to teach 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 but do you not know that in the light that comes from his hand is the hiding place of his power the power of god flows through his word so when the word of god is coming now you are immersed in his glory you see that and the spirit entered me not just when he laid hands on me when he spake unto me 
I've taught you how the word of God works. That the word of God is like a tray. It's carrying something. You don't receive it just for the word's sake. You receive it for what is on it. If, if I'm hungry and you serve me jollof rice, you bring it on a tray. Is that true? The first thing I receive is the tray. I receive the tray with joy, not because I need the tray. I need the rice. The word of God is a conveyor of the possibilities of God. So when the word of God comes to you, you are happy because of what is in it and on it. He sent forth his word. He sent forth his word. His word of deliverance. His word of, of healing. His word of lifting. Have you heard this proverb that in one day a nation can be born? He says, but as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a son. That means it's possible tonight that before the meeting is over, your phone can beep and you will see something that will keep you on your knees. And say, Lord, you just answered my prayer of five years in one day. How shall these things be? That's the voice of unbelief. We're talking God here. We're not talking a man. God. No wonder they said, Lord, I believe. But if what I call faith is nonsense, help thou my own belief. I need help. And Jesus helped him. Men of God, let's trust God for this miracle service to bring us into new realms of glory. Let's trust God. Let's trust God. The path of the just is as a shining light. It shines ever brighter spiritually financially in grace in influence the part of the just shines shines don't allow people threaten you with their ignorance when people are ignorant they rob their ignorance on you and make you guilty for opening yourself up to all the dimensions of god as though you are sinning so if you open up yourself to be blessed financially they they give a body language that suggests that you too you are joining them in this thing receive the whole counsel of god it is beneficial for all of god to be seen in your life you embrace the power of god and hate his resources the pain that is on your child will tell on you and it will destroy your life i receive the whole counsel of god i receive the whole counsel if there is wealth i receive it if there is wisdom i receive it if there is grace i receive it everything that is on this table Sometimes you can be served a buffet and sometimes they can even help you to serve it and you say little of everything. Little of what? Everything. And we will never see. Now you join me. We know there's more that's found me. And sing it from the depth of your heart. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Just one prayer point tonight. Lord, my heart and my mind and my body is open to receive everything everything go ahead and pray everything oh god you're trusting god for a healing miracle now is the time to release your faith you're trusting god for deliverance from all kinds of oppression now is the time to believe you're trusting god for a new level in the spirit a new level in the spirit a new level in the spirit believe it for it you're trusting god for a change of results lord thank you i have evidences in my life but i need a higher level of results Lord, thank you for the prayer dimension, but I need a heavier grace, the spirit of prayer and supplication. Amplify the gift of God in me. Amplify the grace of God in me. Amplify the supply.
fire of the Spirit is upon my life. I need to disciple nations. I need to become an influence over a system, over a structure for the sake of your glory. Pray, pray. Lord, I need a visitation upon my family. How forcible are right words. How forcible are right words. There is a compelling power that right words bring. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to do it this way. We have to hurry up. We're just going to do four things this night. Number one, there will be a session of prophetic deliverance. I'll tell you what that means. I'll pray for people. I'll minister. But there are times that I'll just speak the word, the case, and then God will deal with that. Number two, I, I, if we have the time... The Lord may speak to one or two people. And then number three, we'll take time and minister the healing power of God to the sick. It's very important. And then number four, we'll have the time to pray on our requests. And then I prophesy and speak over everyone. And that will be it for the night. The, the, that time will come with impartations and all of that. I say this to you, especially for those of you who are coming for the first time, so that your heart can be open. It's going to be a flow all through. And I want you to participate with your heart. Let your heart be open. By the way, you can stand in for your loved ones. And then those connecting online from whatever nation of the world, there's no distance truly in the spirit. You can receive, you can believe, and then God can make this true in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is a grace that I found myself releasing upon the body of Christ in this season. And that's what we're going to start with. The Lord, I don't know, God has been doing something in my life since January this year started. Is the grace for speed. This is what I want to release upon our lives. All through my meetings in Lagos, for every meeting, the Lord has instructed me to release that grace. Listen, no matter how many times you've heard me pray it, i like for your heart to be open. There is real speed that can come upon the saints in this season that you will run just just run like elijah are we together now i want to i, I want to talk to you especially for those outside the ushers will only do their best but they are limited usually when i pray this prayer and i release this grace you will find people running physically by the spirit of god there's nothing strange about it this is an operation of the spirit and i want to pray that grace right now from the depth of my heart you see that most of what we need in our lives is speed you will not complain about delay again when you have speed because it will not make any difference god has a system of forcing you to catch up and i want to pray those who are coming here for the first time let this be the first miracle that you receive in the mighty name of jesus now i stretch my hands at the count of three i declare the grace for speed i'm seeing fire coming on the feet of people at the count of three i release that anointing in all the overflows right now one my god two three receive that grace right now receive that anointing everywhere inside and outside i release that grace that grace for speed life comes to you and you begin to run to overtake the chariots of ahab in the name of jesus christ i release speed speed inside outside I release speed. People are receiving that grace. Strange speed. Speed in ministry. Speed in your career. Receive it. God is releasing it upon you. No more delays. No more delays. By the spirit of the living God. No more delays online, offline, localized here. I stretch my hands and I prophesy that grace. Right now, people will begin to run by the Spirit. I'm seeing it in the Spirit. An energizing of the Spirit is coming on men and women. Speed! Speed! I prophesy speed! 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 Outside, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. 
by the roadside speed for you and for your family members by this grace I crush delay I crush delay I crush delay I crush delay I crush stagnation remaining in one position I judge the spirit and the force behind it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ the Lord is telling me he's still releasing that grace but now over families not just individuals you as a person may be moving forward but your family is under a strong yoke of stagnation I stretch my hands right now at the count of three may God use you as a point of contact to supply speed to your family members are you ready one two three receive that grace families families speed speed to the north speed to the south speed to the east speed to the west in the name of jesus speed to the middle belt i release you i release you i release you speed in the name of jesus i cause every power i cause every force by this grace and by this unction i release speed The Lord is showing me a purple robe. I'm seeing a purple robe in the spirit and I'm seeing it come on people. Not everybody, but there are specific people. And I believe purple in, in, in scripture is symbolic of royalty. It is a system of enthronement that is coming on certain people. Lord, I don't know where these people are. They came from miracle service, but I stretch my hands. May the anointing locate such people now and shift you into a new dimension. In the name of Jesus, receive that grace. Receive that grace. Men robed in royalty, beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. Beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Beauty for ashes. for ashes beauty for ashes pay attention to what God is doing beauty for ashes hallelujah I'm seeing in a vision of the Lord and I'm seeing people the right legs being tied with something that looks like looks like a like a bag but tied and i'm seeing on it reproach that's what the lord is seeing reproach and the lord wants to take away that luggage of reproach it may not be for everybody but in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god that everything that represents a reproach in your life tonight here and now i release by the supply of the spirit the grace and i cause that reproach now I cause that reproach now. I cause that reproach now. I cause that reproach now. My God, I cause that reproach now. In the name of Jesus, man of God, I cause that reproach now. In the name of Jesus Christ, businessman, I cause that reproach now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a grace for biological fruitfulness like physical I'm not not just maybe financial and all of that real to, to dislodge barrenness whether it is for you or it's for someone connected to you it's time to receive it now I'm seeing the Lord is leading me to stand here just this room and I'm seeing an anointing locating people right here and taking away that yoke 
of barrenness. I stretch my hands. Whether it is for you or your family members, I'm just doing what the Lord is asking me to do. In the name of Jesus, may that anointing come upon you now. May that grace come upon you now. That if there is anyone within this road, among those standing, that is suffering any kind of barrenness, I come against it right now. I declare, become a joyful mother of children, a joyful father, a joyful mother, a joyful father, a joyful mother, a joyful father, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is asking me to do something serious here. Now, this is an apostolic ministry and we are word-based. So whatever it is you do not understand, you rest in the fact that we work consistent with the Lord. Um, what, what God, I hope that you don't find it offensive. God is asking me to remove some money and just hold it and speak and release a grace for financial rest over people. This is an instruction. That's why I'm taking out time to explain so you don't misunderstand me. You will be surprised to see what happens. I will not ordinarily do that. No, we, we represent, we are people of integrity and this is not some superstitious manipulative thing. But we are in a season of fruitfulness and God is giving me an instruction. So I'm just going to do exactly what God is asking me to do. Just to be able to hold something and release that grace. And that you have the grace to receive you surprised to see what happens father i've obeyed you in childlike foolishness i stretch my hands right now let this mantle and this unction lord let it rest on your people at the count of four that in a way you will shift them to such dimensions of supernatural supplies get ready now one two three four receive that fire right now step into that level of strange abundance in the name of jesus christ i place a grace upon your life you may look weak but in the name of jesus let there be supplies from heaven let there be supplies from heaven let there be supplies from heaven in the mighty name of jesus in the name of jesus i provoke over your life the grace for strange financial supplies don't say you don't need it 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 in the name of jesus let it give you rest to serve the lord let it give you the fortitude to stop begging in the name of jesus and it will allow you to concentrate on the matters of the kingdom and of destiny i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ There are people entering realms right now in the spirit entering financial dimensions it is first spiritual before physical listen to me it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness let your faith come alive there are people entering dimensions and levels of grace and supplies and possibilities it's in you come dropping seeds out of ignorance or pressure please please i'm praying from my heart if you don't know what you are doing please don't feel guilty and don't feel under any kind of pressure whatsoever are we together let me tell you this my brothers and my sisters when god begins to speak over your life in an area is because he has seen what is going to befall men and like an ark he's creating an ark of gopher wood that represents safety many people in this year will languish financially i'm telling you this listen there will be a lot of cries that's why god is releasing this grace
there will be more people backsliding as a result of lack of resources than just a demonic attack please again i plead with you i plead with you in the name of jesus do not be under any pressure listen they did not keep a basket here for you to come and keep money i'm, I'm saying this from the depth of my heart and sincerely so i'm saying this from the depth of my heart and sincerely so we are committed to helping you experience god we're not playing games with anyone's destiny but i'm saying it again that there are people entering strange realms this is more than a miracle alert this is not miracle alert this is a realm it's a it's a dimension in the spirit and in the name of jesus i stand by this anointing again and i shift you step in step in step in step in step into this realm of surprise step into this realm of grace for your family for your family for your destiny step into this realm of grace it's in you lord it's in you lord we know there's more that's found me it's in you lord it's in you lord I know there's more that's found me And we will never say we will never settle for less We know there's more that's found in you Hallelujah I'm seeing a woman outside The Lord is showing me a woman outside The power of God is coming upon that woman right now outside. I'm seeing that this is a woman of many sorrows. Her name is not given to me. But I'm seeing that this is a woman outside with all kinds of first financial issues and then family issues and anointing. A very strong anointing will come upon that woman. And the Lord is telling me that he's bringing upon people the spirit of revelation. Is, is a dimension of grace i want to pray that prayer right now father in the name of jesus christ i don't know who they are i don't know where they are but i stretch my hands i'm seeing fire like rings of fire just coming upon the eyes of people i release that grace right now help them please i release that grace right now blessed are you O lord Blessed are you, O Lord, and it is holy. Something is coming on you. But I can't, I don't I wish the more come, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the sea. Creating day and night, turning darkness into light, arranging the stars to your But I can't deny my body. I'm seeing like a letter and I'm seeing congratulations on it and the Lord is telling me it's a grace for jobs it's a grace for jobs please believe now it's a grace there are people who have been praying it and the Lord is asking me to count five just the, the number five and a grace will come for some you are already walking but God will lift you like the stars rising one two three four five receive that grace right now in the name of jesus i release that grace supernatural testimonies supernatural testimonies of jobs in the name of jesus supernatural testimonies for you and for your loved ones i don't care where the job must come from but i decree and i prophesy these jobs come to you speedily 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. My hands are shaking. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. I'm stretching my hands. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. There are people that need to step into the healing ministry. The healing anointing. Right now I release that place. The healing anointing. Makato Sebekata. You can't be a man of God without the healing grace. The healing anointing. Receive it from ministry. Receive it from ministry. The healing anointing. Outside overflow one. I'm seeing the angels of the Lord. There are impartations of the healing grace. The healing grace. The healing grace. anointing receive it you need it in the name of jesus so you can take the healing power of jesus to the nation in the name of jesus christ you are carrying that grace bodily you are carrying that grace Evidential grace for you. Hallelujah. Now I'm ready to minister deliverance. For those people, you bring them out now. I want to pray. I want to pray. I want to pray. Lift your hands. We are going to pray. We are going to read. These spirits, there are forces that stand the destinies of people. Listen, please, especially if this is your first time coming. Ah, I'm seeing fire, fire from ground up, fire from ground that's from your feet rising up. I'm going to count three. Listen, for those people, please, I want them out here. There is a strong fire of deliverance that is going to come upon you and clear the way for you to experience open doors and victory. Are you ready now? Please, I want you to believe it. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. It's not a ritual. And let me have all the people here, ushers. Thank you, Father. Every devil of darkness, that followed anyone here, any family, any situation here. In the name of Jesus, it's time for them to come out of their hiding place. I decree and I prophesy that at the count of three, as you shout Jesus, may the fire of God bring a separation between you and those influences. One, get ready. Two, three, shout Jesus. Come out of them now. I cast every devil in the name of Jesus and they shall cast out devils I command the spirit influences behind situations behind circumstances I command in the name of Jesus that they come out of their hiding place in the name of Jesus bring them out spirits of ancestry territorial ordinances that keep men in the same position that refuse to let them rise i come against you in the name of jesus bring them out in the name of jesus i'm seeing a sword and i know that sword is the word of god i cross by that sword let there be a separation that every force tying anyone's destiny you're going to shout Jesus again at the count of three be ye lifted all ye ancient doors one two three 
Let them go. In the name of Jesus, release their destinies. Covenant keeping God. Thou way covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Thou way the covenant keeping God. Hallelujah. Hands that I see tied in the realm of the spirit, many of you will feel physical fire on your hands. There will be a strange deliverance. That's why anything you do does not work. No matter if it's a business, it will fail. If it's a relationship, it will fail. Anything you lay your hands, there is a spirit that steals your joy. But right now, I challenge and I attack that spirit. Let the fire of God right now at the count of three separate you from that influence. One, two, three. Let them go now, 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 in the name of Jesus. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. The yoke of bad luck, the yoke of bad luck, the yoke of bad luck. I break it now. The yoke of bad luck. Receive, I'm breaking someone free from this yoke of bad luck. Makato se sekete lekete yakata. Shabranda kato sana kato skele bakaratos. Eketo skete kete kete kete. Karusa siyamakando sana makata. I break you free from the yoke of bad luck. In the name of Jesus. Bad luck. It works well for others until you come. And then something strange just happens. All those under the anointing here. I arrest this spirit. And at the count of three. Every devil you will patch your load. And every trouble you have brought to this destiny. And go. I speak as one sent by the anointing. At the count of three. Leave one. Two. Three. Go. 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 Out of their lives, out of their destinies, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We're so glad to pray for the sick. Nada o kaka sunanka o pangi chika isaya na kila sunanka pangi chika nina da o kaka sunanka o pangi chika isaya bo na kila sunanka o pangi chika who is Janet? Janet, Janet, I hear a name, Janet, Janet, there's, there's no time we have, Janet, please don't enjoy anybody, are you Janet, stand up, I had the name Janet, please don't tell lies, don't embarrass yourself, if you are not Janet, go back, Janet,
Where are you from? In the name of Jesus, look at me. I will pray for everybody, but I will pray for you. Huh? Look at me, look at me. Don't close your eyes. Your family is under serious attack. Uh -huh. Where are they? Where are your family members? They're in Zaria. Zaria, yes. Go and tell them that the Lord is bringing deliverance for your entire Amen. family. Amen. Huh? Not only... Go and tell your family members that the Lord is taking away the reproach Amen. from your family. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I may not be able to talk to everyone, but... Ah. I'm still seeing that thing I saw in the vision. That thing tied on the legs, written reproach, reproach, reproach. And the Lord is taking it away right now. In the name of Jesus, taking away reproach. This lady, tap that lady holding her hands for me. This, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. I'm seeing like oil come upon you. And God is saying he's shifting you. To a new level of favor in the name of jesus i decree and i prophesy by the spirit over you 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 all of you standing here for time's sake i'm going to pray for you one of you um the power of god is going to come on one of you the moment that happens i'll pray for everybody i'm seeing one person one of you the Lord is telling me that the anointing is coming on that person. Not only is God bringing personal spiritual revival to you, God is opening doors of opportunity. Lord, where is that one person? I decree and declare when that one person is identified and then I just pray for all of you in general. I'm seeing someone in around the media where media people are and the Lord is saying you are stepping into your season of laughter. And just around that vicinity of the media I stretch my hands may the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus like a mighty rushing wind rest upon the individuals within that vicinity in the name of Jesus that person must enter into the, the reality of this prophecy I'm back to you people in front in Jesus name I decree and declare whoever that one person is may that anointing and that grace come upon you you will never 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 be the same the power of god will come upon that one person the moment that happens then i'll pray for everybody it's just the instruction god is giving me in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands towards all of you by faith and in the spirit i declare for whatever reason it is that god brought you out here i declare i place the word of god upon your situation and in the name of jesus i declare that you return with testimonies in the name of jesus my dear look at me this lady wearing dark come god bless you you can go back to your seat all of you hold my hands hold it with both of your hands where are you coming from asaba. from asaba yes, the lord is saying i should tell you that this will be the beginning of your days of glory Amen. Oh, this will be the beginning of your days of glory Step into it by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. Never be the same. We raise your banner. We shine your light so We sing in honor of you. Lord, we raise your banner. We shine your light so ladies every spirit that appears to you in dreams sleeping with you in dreams and destroying your destiny anything good that is about i'm praying for everybody but i'm hearing ladies in my spirit to deliver ladies from this spirit good things are about to happen to you and then you have a dream and all kinds of spirits molest you and that's it i'm praying i'm seeing 23 there are more than this but particularly 23 people the lord is bringing strange deliverance for them right now wherever they are 
in the name of Jesus, may the fire of the Holy Spirit from inside this auditorium to the overflows outside online, let there be complete emancipation for such people. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, this lady wearing pink, lift your hands. Look at me. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. I'm seeing the Lord take something out of your body. We're about to pray for the sick. But the Lord is taking something out of your body. That's why I told you to shout that name. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the power of infirmity is broken over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, very quickly, our time is gone. We are going to be very, very fast. Are we together? Um, if you are trusting God, listen carefully. Whether you are in overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. If what you have, please listen. If what you have is a terminal disease. A terminal disease is something that is akin to a death sentence. Are we together? Like a death sentence. You know what I mean. I don't have to mention names. Please, whether you are in overflow one, two, three, be fair, be honest. I will want to minister by myself to you. Now, number two, those in here, you can come out and you are trusting God for healing for you or for your loved ones. Overflow one, please to your projector stand. Overflow two, same thing to your projector stand. Overflow three to your projector stand. So if you do not belong to this category that I particularly requested to come, please, God is here. Make sure you are sincere. Make sure you are honest. I'd like all of you to come stand. I'm about to minister. And there will be men and women of God scattered across. Those by the roadside, I don't know what overflow that will be. Let's say an extension, overflow four. You will join overflow two. And then there will be men of God ministering by the Spirit. Please, because of time, you do not just a touch is enough we're functioning together under a corporate anointing so you don't have to particularly except if they have a personal prophetic word for you you don't have to just waylay them and harass them and say look this and that and that just stand by faith as soon as they pray for you you go back to your seat you check yourself you must return with your testimony if it's a medical report whatever it is i'd like you to just come believing hallelujah praise the lord in the name of jesus i decree and declare that together as a team under the anointing of the holy spirit overflow one overflow two overflow three and those online we agree that this touch becomes a touch that will birth your miracle and your testimony in the name of jesus in the name of jesus now as as we pray for you worship team please help us whilst we are doing that how many of you have your prayer requests you have your prayer request please wave it so while this is happening usher's pr department please join them uh and then if, if if there's a need for that maybe the protocol department can help let's collate the prayer requests very quickly so that we can speak over it immediately we'll be very fast please um dear people of god let's be very fast as we minister to them so that we can um finish up on time Blessed be the name of the Lord. For those of you standing here, I want you to believe there is a God in heaven and that this touch becomes a supernatural touch. Doesn't matter what the situation is, release your faith in Jesus' name. God bless you. Um, I will just, just stand on them because of time. Please, if you are yet to submit your prayer request, it's not a ritual. You can wave it and an usher or someone will quickly, please, if you're under the anointing, you can wave it or tell them where it is and they'll pick it for you. Please, quickly, quickly. Those online connect by faith. Stretch your hands here and let's pray. Father, we decree and we declare. We just have a minute for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands and prophesy. Libras, Kadabrando, Shari, Katosia, brother. The same way we are standing on these requests in the name of Jesus. This is establishing your dominion above every challenge, above every situation in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we decree by the power of the Holy Spirit, every impossible situation here, we turn it around right now in the name of Jesus. We turn it around, believe, believe, believe. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. We turn it around in the name of Jesus. This is a strategy that the Lord delivered to us. A representation of your pain, your stress, that which attempts to challenge God over your life. No matter how many times we prophesy, we are limited. And this is an opportunity to have everyone. It's like tabling your heart before God. There is a God that answers prayers. This is not a ritual. That's why we bring it before him. And let me tell you, we have, we have heard of marvelous testimonies from this. And I believe that in this year of extraordinary fruitfulness, that this that you have dropped here before the Lord, in the name of Jesus, as you have brought it before him, it will never, if it's a tragic situation, it will never return to you again. And if it is a request that must appear in your life, then I decree and declare, I don't know how it will happen. Like the prophet said, you may not see wind, you may not see rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water. I prophesy, I decree and declare, in the name that is above all names, by the God of all grace, your answer will find its way to your life. Even if it means happening through your enemy or happening to a man that has vowed not to help you, may my God make it happen for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I prophesy to you that these Egyptians you see today, that you see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. You see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. For many of you, even before this month is over, in the name of Jesus, you will tick your list one by one, one by one, one by one, one by one. In the name of Jesus, we decree it so by the power of the Holy Spirit. We decree it so by the blood of the Lamb. We decree it so by the word of God. We establish it. It is done in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you now. This will be um the first time we're doing this in a miracle service for the year why do i round up the services with a prophetic word because i believe in the power of prophecy and it is also a spiritual mechanism to send the word to you wherever you are are we together now you don't have to be called as an individual the word of god comes is yours for you to receive and then you see the creative potentials in that word. People's lives have changed some overnight just because a word came and now it's about to come again. Let me tell you, do you know that I listen to the miracle service messages myself and I receive all the prayers from the man of God? Just because I'm the vessel being used by God does not exempt me from receiving too. I listen to the messages and God is my witness. I follow every prayer with all my heart sincerely. Are we together now? So believe this and you will see it work in your life. It is only what you believe that will work. Are we together? Favor like never before. In the name of Jesus. Beginning from this night, may it follow you like a shadow follows a man. I say it again, favor like never before from tonight. May he follow you in the name of Jesus Christ. Strange favor, strange favor, activating possibilities in your life. Strange favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, every overdue issue in your life, an issue that has stayed long, beyond necessary in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that this is the season of strange settlement over your life may my God the God of all grace establish and settle you in every area 
in the name of Jesus Christ every long standing issue comes to an end now everything that misrepresents you before your helpers the spirit that creates a bad image in the presence of those who can help and lift you there is such an operation of darkness that when men desire to help you something happens around your life in the name of jesus it comes to an end now in the name of jesus it comes to an end now i pray for you in in this season you need wisdom not sophia not the wisdom of men not the princes of this world but the wisdom that comes from above that is accompanied with mighty works it says i will give you a wisdom and a mouthpiece that none of your adversary can gainsay nor resist i decree and declare receive this strange order of wisdom receive this supernatural dimension of wisdom in the name of jesus christ the level of anointing that you must be upgraded to in this season so that the hand of god will be evident on your life i stretch my hands let there be a baptism of that anointing upon you now let there be a baptism of that anointing upon you now if you are in ministry let there be a baptism of that anointing now for every leader here let there be a baptism of that anointing now everyone do for promotion your place of work or your standing in for your your loved ones i decree and declare we announce and we establish their rising in the mighty name of jesus christ the spirit that continues to minister to you that you will die and that you will not see the end of this year you will die during election you will die during this and that a crisis will happen and you'll be a victim of this i silence the voice of that spirit now i decree and declare whether by road whether by air whether through the operation of the wickedness in men remain ever exempted from death in the name of jesus may you be too late for tragedy if it will cause shame you will not be found there if it will cause pain you will not be found there in the name of jesus christ I decree that whatever it is you're involved with whether it's your career the works of your hands your business whatever it is that God uses as a channel to increase your influence to bless people and to empower you in the name of Jesus may grace be multiplied upon it in the name of Jesus may grace be multiplied upon it in the name of Jesus may grace be multiplied upon it Some of you at the beginning of the year your prayer life is already down it's too early your word life already down no appetite to study scripture no appetite to pray whether you sleep by eight o'clock or by ten you will still wake up by eight the next day this one is a spirit it's no longer tiredness anything you don't have control over has been hijacked over by satan god gives his beloved sleep it is true but slumber is of the devil there is a difference between slumber and sleep one of the differences is control there are some of us even if you sleep by two in the afternoon you will wake up by eight or nine the next day until good things finish before you wake up it's a spirit i curse it from your life now. you will go to bed when you want to and you will wake up when you need to in the name of jesus christ god has declared over us but let me declare again over our finances 
please i will continue to see this they prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo I decree and declare this is the season that you step into overflow in the name of Jesus Christ no one connected to this grace no one connected to this vision goes down financially sing hallelujah to the Lord I'm just seeing the smoke of his presence across his place. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Sing Christ is risen. Sing Christ is risen. Sing Christ is risen from the dead. Spirit of the living God, we pray that whilst the word comes, move in our midst and let it truly be. That this was a night of encounter in the name of Jesus Joel chapter 2 from verse 25 Joel chapter 2 from verse 25 and I will restore to you the years that the locusts had eaten the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and shall be satisfied and shall praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you. The last statement says, and my people shall never, shall never let me use this opportunity to speak that everything that followed you here representing shame and representing reproach i stand upon this altar in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god may shame and reproach be rolled away forever may shame and reproach be rolled away forever The Bible says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. That was his end. But at the beginning, the Bible says, because the mother bore him in sorrow, she named him Jabez. But a time came, he was angry. He said, it's time for me to go forward. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast. Again, oh, let me speak over someone. It may be that there are limitations that have followed you for years in the name of Jesus Christ who is also the lifter of men I prophesy to you everything tying you down so that the only thing moving is your age nothing else is moving in your life I command let it be broken now 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 when he called lazarus out from the grave he gave an instruction he said lose him and let him go let me speak to someone here whatever has tied you in the name that is above all names by the power that raised jesus christ from the dead i declare be loose now be loose now be loose now now please sit down the bible the bible lets us know that in our walk with god please pay attention 
there are systems of advantage that can be introduced into the life of a believer that gives him an edge over life and over circumstances are we together now in the dealings of god with men and captured all through scripture from genesis to revelation we see that there were men who were under all kinds of circumstances but that somewhere along their lives a system of advantage was introduced into their lives and it began to change the narrative of their lives here's what the bible says for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the lord and those who are the called according to his purposes why is it that all things can work for good because regardless the situation and the circumstance in god's economy he sustains the ability as the el shaddai to introduce what i call systems of advantage there is nobody's life that is in advantage by default are we together now yes the first of that system of advantage being salvation that when you come to the saving knowledge of jesus christ according to the authority of scripture the bible says that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son then the bible lets us know that you become a partaker of god's life that is the first system of advantage that comes into your life john 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy the bible says it says but i am come that ye may have life and that you have that life more abundantly Amen. are we still together but then there are other systems of advantage that are spiritual arsenals that god had made and put in place for believers so that no matter and regardless what happens in your life by the introduction of these systems of advantage you eventually emerge victorious it is it is on the strength of these systems of advantage that we show the all surpassing dominion power of the christ so that regardless my background regardless what it is that happened or did not happen in my life once i come to christ there is no such thing as too late because there are sufficient spiritual arsenals that can be introduced into the life of a believer to begin to correct even age-long anomalies are we together now an example of these systems of advantage is the mercy of god one of these systems of advantage is the favor of god one of these systems of advantage is speed and acceleration all these are provisions that were captured in the economy of god to the intent that when and if any man decides to walk with the lord and begins to grow through knowledge you can access these truths and then the reality of the divine life start speaking because you engage these things there are people for instance who come from backgrounds where they are saddled with all kinds of yokes and curses and by default these individuals become victims of life victims of situations and circumstances and even if they get born again there are still constraints that their lives constraints in their lives by reason of the advantage the devil had there has to be a way of correcting that anomaly are we together now there are people who by reason of activities of witchcraft did not have the privilege say to go to school early and to move forward early so already by default they are already retrogressed and delayed in life is there a way that god can help those people to catch up in destiny oh yes there is the name given to that mystery is called speed that god can take the 10 years 
that were wasted and transfer it into a man's future and make it happen in one day are we together now listen when we say we are victorious we're not just saying it because jesus died and resurrected just religiously we're saying it because we are aware of the spiritual arsenals that the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus has provided for the believer today it is on the strength of these truths that we make our boast in the lord are we together now yes so we know that we are victorious we know that in spite of what happened or did not happen a woman may be barren for five years ten years even twenty years if that woman gives birth to a child yet yeah, thank god for the child but time has gone if she is to give birth to four children one by one by one by one at what age will she be done giving birth so when god gives her quadruplets he did not just give a child he carried years and brought it in nine months are, are you seeing that now i'm saying this because tonight there is something that is about to happen to someone here in the name of jesus the son of the living god that the things that have 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 been um a, a disadvantage to your life we have come to introduce a system of advantage into your work that will begin to so change things that those who knew you will say is saul when has saul also become one of the prophets please sit down hallelujah are we together once upon a time moses went to meet his half brother Ramesses, who had now become the pharaoh of egypt to advocate the exodus of god's people and they came out of egypt and he began to pursue them they stood before the red sea there was no provision to move forward again egyptians behind the sea in front by what architectural mechanism were they going to build a system of safety to cross over everybody says systems of advantage and in exodus chapter 14 when you read from verse 13 and 14 and 15 moses had a strange encounter with god he said fear not moses is speaking now a visionary leader he said stand still and see the salvation of the lord which he show you today for these egyptians whom ye have seen today you shall see them no more forever listen as at the time he was saying this he did not even know the dynamics of how it will happen all he knew was that the lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace then verse 15 the lord said to moses wherefore criest thou to me he says speak unto the children of israel that they go forward hold on how do i go forward when i know that a sea can swallow anything i hope you know that it was not just that the sea parted the gap, the land had to rise to their level to be able to walk. Because even if the sea parted, it would still be a depth that they would not cross. Listen carefully. Just help those under the anointing now. And then, Moses received that instruction. And when he stretched forth his rod, the Egyptians saw a dimension of God they had not seen among any of the gods of Egypt. The God who with the breath of his nostrils, he parted the sea like doors, hither and thither, and lifted land to their level on dry ground. When they cross over, Pharaoh attempting to cross over was swallowed by the sea. Miriam was too grateful. She sang a song. She said, I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. Even the horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. One time, they became hungry. Very hungry. And God said, I want to show you the systems that are available in this kingdom. Manna, not seeds for you to sow. 
there are times God can give you seed and wisdom to sow but there are times the urgency requires bread you don't have the time to start sowing and waiting for harvest God can send both seed and he can give bread he can give seed to the sower but he also can give bread to the eater it is true that God can give you a job and you can start saving for 5-10 years but there are times that God can give you the keys to a house in one day it is the same God doing it please pay attention then they stand in front of Jericho a fence so fortified the Bible says five chariots could stand on it imagine a fence that five chariots could stand on it even if it collapses it's still a fence again and Joshua was led to introduce another system of advantage the Bible says Jericho was shot nothing could come out of it nothing could enter it and they went round singing praises every day once and on the seventh day they went round and he said when you hear the sound of that trumpet that you lift up a shout and the bible tells us that the walls of jericho it did not just fall it sank the power of god and one of these systems of advantage tonight that the lord wants to introduce is called the mystery of restoration ah, the mystery of restoration please look up scattered through scripture the bible tells us that men can gain things but also men can lose things is that true we see that people lost things even believers lost things in scripture for instance Saul, the son of kish they lost their donkey the father's donkey and they went looking for it jesus himself in giving his parable helping them understand the system of the kingdom spoke about the parable of the lost coin so we know that it is not unusual for things to be missing it is not unusual for us to lose things but then the bible gives us another interesting angle to it that man can lose things but man can lose time the loss of time according to scripture is truly what we call loss if you lose things you can get it back but when you lose time because destiny is measured in time write it down the unit of destiny is time that means whatever you give your time to you give part of your life to whatever takes your time has taken a part of your destiny are we together now the unit of destiny is time and so there are times you can lose things sadly after the pandemic or during the pandemic many people lost money many people lost jobs many people lost businesses so we know that men can lose things but it is more deadly when you lose time when you meet a dying man and ask him what is your greatest desire he will not say more houses he will not say more land the greatest request of a dying man is more time isaiah 38 the bible lets us know that hezekiah was sick unto death and isaiah came to him and said put your house in order god has brought a word you will not recover from this sickness the bible says isaiah turned his face to the wall and his prayer was a request of time time from the human standpoint is irredeemable when it passes it doesn't go back it only goes forward and that means whatever can eat up your time has taken a part of your destiny so when the bible says i will restore the years you need to understand the gravity of that miracle restore years how do you restore years when a man gets born again at 40 respectfully speaking and at 50 
yes he's done well to get born again but in truth as far as destiny and impact and fulfillment of life is concerned time is gone you will need to introduce this system of advantage in your life is that true yeah. restoration is a very powerful mystery to restore means to take a person or to take a thing to its original position where it would have been if there were no constraint listen carefully there is a difference between restoration and progress let me have two people can i have two gentlemen two well-dressed gentlemen please come let me use you for an example just two and that's fine we have this one more person watch this now i like to teach illustratively so that you will understand now this is what i want you to do walk together all right walk slowly now these guys are at the same pace in life and destiny are, are we together now they are going to walk towards me but along as they walk i'm going to make one of them to be delayed and then eventually i'll ask him to start coming i want to show you the difference between progress and restoration are we together now walk gently gentlemen so born on the same day and now for whatever reason stop moving can you see this is where he would have been so he's behind now now keep moving this is progress not restoration because he will never still catch up now let me show you what restoration is when god picks him and brings him here do you understand that now so that when you look at his life you cannot find the gap that delay created again i prophesy to you again in the name of jesus christ everything that has represented delay in your life here at this conference may my god push you forward in the name of jesus christ thank you please sit down please sit down so it is true that we can lose things the concept of losses is a concept that we do not want to hear anything about not in business not nobody wants to lose losing is dangerous no one wants to lose a loved one no one wants to lose money no one wants to lose honor no one wants to lose respect no one wants to lose your valuable why do we protect our cars why do we protect our homes because we hate losses let's discuss the subject of losses for a while is god helping someone there are five reasons why people lose in life remember we are teaching on advancement but we have to deal with the subject of delay and retrogression there are five reasons from scripture why men lose number one very quickly the first reason why people lose in life is because of lack of discernment write it down please the lack of discernment lack of discernment can cause you to lose hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 we we'll walk through a few scriptures hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 the bible says therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep remember jesus was giving us the parable of the sower is that true and he said the seed is the word of god the soil being the hearts of men and he said for all the soils seeds were sown but satan came immediately and he caused losses and for those that satan came they were the ones who did not pay attention to produce understanding from their hearing genesis chapter 28 and verse 16 very interesting rendition this just a background for that scripture very quickly this was jacob remember the bible tells us that jacob came to a place called loss and he laid a stone for to sleep in the night are we bible students and then the bible says while he slept he saw a ladder he had a dream and he saw a ladder that connected the earth and the heavens angels were ascending and descending but do you know none of them were coming to him they were moving close to him taking messages to those who were calling them and he was there and never partook of that angelic activity 
and when he woke up verse 16 please he made a very instructive statement he said surely the lord is in this place and i knew not i did not discern that i was not just lying down on a floor that there was an altar here my father had a covenant with god i came close to the place of covenant he would have blessed me he would have lifted me but lack of discernment did you know that one of the highest indices according to scripture that measures maturity is the ability to discern strong meats the bible says are for them who are of full age is that true who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern discernment is powerful the faculty of perception this comes through prayer this comes through study of scripture this comes through exposing yourself to the atmosphere of the holy spirit in this end times you need discernment if you do not want to lose your bishopric to lose your destiny it takes discernment are we still together the first reason why people lose we're dealing with the mystery of restoration lack of discernment number two the second reason why people lose in this kingdom is carelessness 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 is the second reason why we lose revelation chapter 3 please and verse 11 revelations 3 and verse 11 it says behold i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown you can lose your crown hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3 hebrews 2 and verse 3 please give it to us hebrews 2 and verse 3 the bible says how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation negligence carelessness many people have lost precious things because of carelessness they have lost valuable destiny relationships they have lost opportunities for instance how many young people had the opportunity they heard that a job offer was there at a platter of gold their uncle said send your cv and they carelessly assumed that the job will always be there carelessness is dangerous we must obtain grace tonight to fight carelessness like you fight the devil you can lose things you can lose years because of carelessness number three are we still together the third reason for losses in this kingdom is called ignorance of the laws of life ignorance of the laws of life comma the laws of destiny and the laws of the kingdom ignorance of the laws of life the laws of destiny and the laws of the kingdom psalm 82 and verse 5 listen this world operates by laws there are laws of life there are laws of destiny there are laws of the kingdom your ignorance of those laws can cost you so many things including your life let me give you an instance someone can decide right now to end his life by going to stand in front of a moving train is that true he violated the laws of life someone can be part of a bad relationship that leads him into destroying a precious destiny that's violating the laws of destiny but there are people who can give themselves over through ignorance and the devil can take advantage of them and destroy and waste their lives ignorance listen this is a kingdom that operates by light it takes spiritual illumination high level illumination psalms 82 and verse 5 the bible says they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course the next verse says i have said ye are god and all of you not some are children of the most high the tragedy is in the next verse but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes ignorance is costly we must contend for light we must contend for spiritual illumination 
Is that true? It was this passion for light to supply spiritual intelligence to the body that made Paul to make that statement he made in Ephesians chapter 3. Please give us Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 2 and 3 then we'll jump to 9 and 10. 2 and 3 if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me for your sake now to you word how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words now when you go to verse 9 he was granted grace what is the grace the grace is to make all men see to open the eyes of men take away ignorance and verse 10 is the reason to the intent that now to the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God dominion is the resultant effect of the comprehension of the principles of the kingdom dominion is not an impartation there is no anointing in scripture for dominion dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of God we have beautiful media people here doing an excellent job of coverage while I teach they are operating by knowledge not their size not their gender it is the level of illumination they have as far as this activity is concerned we must contend for mastery and fight ignorance like we fight the devil are we together number four is god helping us we're discussing losses because when you want to make advancement advancement happens in the absence of situations that retrogress or impede you to the degree to which that impedance is taken away that is the degree to which it can be said you are advancing number four the fourth reason for losses is abuse and misuse the fourth reason why people lose is abuse and misuse matthew chapter 25 from verse 14 jesus is teaching now and he's teaching about what we have come to know as the parable of the talent follow carefully for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country it says who called his own servants and delivered unto them goods so he gave them something and unto one he gave five talents to another two to another one the bible says to every man according to his ability not according to his love for them at the end of this parable you see he was correct for that allocation 17. the bible says Let's go back to 16, 25 verse 16. 25 verse 16. Help us, media. We're still discussing the parable. Then he that had received the five talents, he went and traded with the same, and he made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he gained also two. The tragedy now, 18. But he that received one went and did what? dig the earth and hid his lord's money you bury seeds not talents talents are not for the ground talents are for multiplication you sow seeds the earth is for seeds not for talents and yet this man took something that was supposed to be you were supposed to do business with it abuse and misuse is one of the reasons why people lose when the owner of the talents came back to demand accountability in his arrogance he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you do not sow and so i thought to do you a favor i buried it here is your one talent and he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant he took that one talent and he gave it to the one who had proven faithfulness in stewardship the bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful are we still together tonight abuse and misuse it was dr miles munro of blessed memory who said when the purpose of a thing is not known he said that the abuse of it is inevitable 
the word abuse is an abbreviation for abnormal use when a thing is not used within the boundary of its purpose is called abuse are we together so a quick recap before i mention the last point the reasons for losses in life number one lack of discernment number two carelessness number three ignorance of the loss of life the loss of destiny the loss of the kingdom number four abuse and misuse number five tests and trials the fifth reason according to scripture why men lose it can be it may be because of tests and trials job chapter one please from verse nine the bible clearly gives us a a biblical rendition of the life of this man called job the bible testifies that he was a man who feared god and eschewed evil please give us verse 9 follow carefully as i read then satan answered the lord and said does job fear god for nothing has thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side Hast thou not blessed the work of his hands, my God? So Satan can give this kind of testimony about a man. Satan is testifying before God that I came close to a man and I found that man so fortified. Both him, his house, and his endeavor. Next verse. Now put forth your hand and touch all that he hath, and he will curse you to the face the lord said unto satan behold all that he hath is in thy power only upon himself put not forth your hand so satan went forth from the presence of the lord sin two tragedy strikes on earth now and there was a day may that day never come to your life but for this man there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house that means they were responsible children the elder brother was already established and something happened there came a messenger unto job and said the oxen were plowing the asses feeding besides them be patient and the sabians fell upon them and took them away yea they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword and i only am escaped to tell you imagine this kind of news next verse while he was yet speaking there came another and said the fire of god is fallen from heaven and had burned up the sheep the servants consumed them and i only am escaped to, to tell you while he was yet speaking my god there came another and said the chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon your camels they have carried them away yea and slain the servants with the edge of the sword and i only am escaped to tell you as though that was over he was yet speaking there came another and said this one is not just animals again now your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house and behold there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead and i am escaped alone to tell you two more verses then job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and worshipped after such a news next verse please we're finishing at 22 and said naked came i out of my mother's womb and naked shall i return thither the lord gave and the lord had taken away blessed be the name of the lord 22 hallelujah and in all this job sin not nor charge god foolishly listen to me there are times in your life and my life i know this is not a popular message but there are times that events can happen around your life to the end that the worship of things and your connection to things be broken 
God's obsession is not to take away things from us. He desires that we prosper. But there is a problem when those, you see, the thing with things is that they also want to be lords. So when they come to your life, they don't remain where you kept them. They also begin their manifesto in your life to ascend to a point where they take God's throne. There is a system for managing those things. God enthrones himself in your life by withdrawing from your life everything that tries to be him. So if it is your intelligence, if it is your uncle, your connection, there are people who come to church and while they are saying understand faith, they are laughing but they don't really care because there is an uncle who are giving them assurance. Whenever you are ready, you come and just when you are ready, the uncle relocates to Canada. Let me tell you what happens to you when you come for service under that condition. Whether there is praise worship or not, you will lie down on the ground. That's the real day you will start learning faith. Because at that point now, you have been forced. The human spirit is stubborn. It does not easily bow to the Lordship of Christ. Not in the presence of things. Not in the presence of many. The Bible says it this way. Apostle John was teaching us in his epistles. He says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. The word love there is the Greek word eros. It's an affinity, an ungodly affinity that can affect your relationship with God. There is a jealousy dimension of God that will not share accommodation with every other thing he created. It's an exclusive position. So whilst he blesses you with prosperity, increase, fame, anointing, whatever it is, he doesn't have a problem with you having those things. But there is a side effect to men who have not been worked upon by God. It does not mean you are bad. It's a weakness in humans. You must pass through a season in the spirit where God steps back and allow those things that have attempted to be Savior and Lord and El Shaddai. You see the futility of them outside of the influence of God the end is not to destroy you see when you are passing through this season with God it looks like he's nonchalant over the things you are losing he's concentrating on your training because when you do learn restoration is still possible so while you are saying God are you not seeing what is leaving me he's saying in my world not yet, there's no such thing as something living I am working on you there are people who stand and brag based on their certificates, based on their uncles, their aunties. Did your Bible not say some will trust in horses, it says. Some trust in chariots. But we, we who have been cultured to understand, we trust in the name. That anything minus the name of the Lord is a disaster. It's only a matter of time. A man can vow and say, come and meet me tomorrow and get a contract. And between that night till the next day and Ahitophel comes to him and gives him a counsel and by the next day he says I can't remember telling you such a thing listen believers it is true that there are times that tests and trials can cause us to lose things albeit temporarily James chapter 1 Apostle James was teaching us from verse 2 are we still learning james james chapter one apostle james is teaching us he said my brethren so he's talking to believers in christ he's not talking to the heathen my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations support your confidence with this revelation knowing this there is something you need to know that gives you confidence in the midst of plenty and in the midst of nothing in the school of the spirit called the cave of adulam that is where great men are made there are certain times in this life some prayers you cannot pray some things away you can only pray for grace to pass through it run away from people without scars they have jumped the school of the spirit paul said let no man trouble me i'm speaking to some of you because hear me your loss is not because of carelessness uh -uh. There is the making of a man of God. There is a making of an intercessor. There is a making of a kingdom financier. Not every loss is demonic. 
the training of champions is hard god called you to be a kingdom financier and gave you an instruction to carry all your money and bring to church you brought the money and sold and told by the next day the heavens will open and for one year you are now living from hand to mouth he does not hate you he's teaching you faith there will be a recompense so that you can stand holding an account with one billion and yet it's not in your heart jesus is still lord that is the morale of the training can i tell you this i came here sensing in my heart that within your region there are people who have lost things and even lost time there are people as soon as you finish school you wanted to get a job like every other person god says stay back and everybody is moving forward and even you you don't know the name of what you are doing with god god what are you doing with me can i tell you this you must understand that when god is silent his silence is a language every time god is silent he's saying you are in the school of the spirit don't be embarrassed you will cry it's true you've often heard people i hope god is blessing you tonight there are fathers of faith here veterans of the gospel your fathers in the land you ask them they will tell you their journeys they will tell you they will there, there as a man of god there are times you will be going through things yourself you will counsel others and you will receive a word for them but for you a word does not come and yet god will demand obedience and compliance you pray for someone and there is an open door but there are bills waiting for you and you are saying god i'm serving you faithfully i'm teaching you what the silence of god is saying you are in a school while you are crying heaven is clapping and saying don't give up because the bible says let us not be weary in well-doing it says for we will reap well-doing is a seed is god speaking to us there are various reasons can i tell you this <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Genesis chapter 40, don't turn there, just write it for reference. The Bible talks of a prison. Look up, please. Joseph and the wine presser and the baker met in one place. The name of that place is the prison. The prison is where both good and bad people meet. Don't judge everybody in the prison. They are there for various reasons. There are some who are there because they defaulted. But there are some who are there because they are being made to become saviors. The prison is where both good and bad meet. The cross is where both Jesus and the thieves meet. Be careful when you judge people while they are going through seasons. You do not know the reason why they are going through it. Are we together in that same prison there was joseph the righteous there was the wine presser the butler the defaulters they were all there the way to the throne is the cross the way to sit over egypt is to pass through the prison let me speak to you many of you admire greatness you admire great people I want to tell you there is a mystery that not many of them will tell you sincerely look beyond the crowns and the glamour there are scars that are testaments of endurance they lost to gain if you want to gain in this kingdom you must be prepared to lose losing is how we gain are we together because you will not appreciate restoration until you understand the idea of losses there are people right now who have lost things you lost a job because of your integrity you made up your mind you will not compromise you will not bribe and you lost not every loss is proof that god has left you there are losses that are scars of honor symbols of endurance is god still with us tonight let me give us three keys for restoration and then we'll pray someone's breakthrough is coming now please pay attention keys give us access as 
big as a door is it's a small key that opens it how many of you have stood before a giant door simply because a key that could enter your pocket was missing you stood before that door helpless as adult and matured as you are a small key was missing and it kept you grounded keys are powerful they can open great doors even ancient doors number one what is the first key for restoration please pay attention number one the first key that leads to restoration according to scripture is called self-examination the power of evaluation the power of self-examination you want restoration in your life your family your business self-examination second corinthians 13 and verse 5 help us media second corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 read with me please if you're a christian and you can see it projected ready one to read examine yourself it says uh-huh whether ye be in the faith the instruction is examine yourselves to examine yourself means to find a place and sit down and engage in deep contemplation there are many people who pray but they do not think thinking is a miracle the bible says god is able to do more than what we ask or think you've heard me say it in my teachings that both your prayer and your thinking are warriors there is a prayer warrior there is a thinking warrior god answers all the requests they bring to him you can pray well but if you do not think well you may never come out of certain tragedies the psalmist would write a song and he would write under sila pause and think deeply is that true the bible encourages believers to think to sustain times of deep contemplation for instance in philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 it says finally brethren whatsoever things are true honest just pure lovely are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise it says think on these things self-examination luke chapter 15 popular story we we'll read three verses from verse 17 luke 15 from verse 14 this was the story of the prodigal son please keep the scripture there just as a background let's go to verse 17 okay well keep it from verse 14 remember the young man who had access to his father's wealth but he wanted ownership is that true and the father gave him he did not think well if he thought well he would know that access is better than ownership because access you have you have the abundance to you minus the responsibility of maintenance but ownership you have both access and the responsibility of maintenance in this kingdom we don't own anything owners are rebels we are stewards my car my house my children then you maintain it in this kingdom we have access from genesis you may freely eat but it's not your own but the the carnal man wants it in his name ownership the young boy had access but he wanted ownership father i'm of age let it be in my name luck started when access switched to ownership and the young man went as a result of his careless thinking his life deteriorated he lost everything are we still together to a point where someone who was in a place of royalty was now feeding with the swine 14 please and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want we're reading to 20 and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the fields to feed swine what a what a decline and he would not feign and he would not fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him and when he came to himself the bible did not say the holy ghost spoke to him the bible did not say a counselor advised him it is within the power of the human spirit to sit down and say why is my life like this 
listen let me tell you there there is for many of you here this is already a word for you don't allow yourself to just keep growing old and things are just happening you need to sustain the power of contemplation i say father why am i always in lack why am i always fighting the seed for an answer is a question you do not deserve an answer until you have a question is that true for someone here you need to sit down and think why am i failing in this business lord you gave me a ministry influence zero doctrine zero salvation zero something is wrong the bible says be still and you will know there is a level of knowledge that comes when you are still our generation sadly is a busy generation thank god for technology but if not managed it can be the demon that distracts you out of advancement is that true all kinds of things clamoring for your attention no champions and great people those who make advancement in life are people who understand the power of deep contemplation they lock themselves you are a visionary leader millions are depending on the ideas and the decisions that come out of that contemplation you cannot be careless you cannot be rash obtain grace in jesus name to sit down quietly some of you after this conference you may just need to go excuse everybody out of your house or your room or your office and just sit down quietly no television no radio no internet holy ghost i'm here there has to be a way out of this speak to me go and ask inventors as champions as visionary leaders ideas are birthed in the place of contemplation where they sit quietly there has to be a way to this business there has to be a way to raise this capital there has to be a way to ministry spirit of the living god i open up my faculties to your influence and whilst you are there suddenly from heaven something comes and graduates you to victory for the next 10 years are we blessed the power of self-examination the power of contemplation this is the first key to restoration number two the second key that leads to restoration is brokenness psalm 51 verse 17 brokenness because there are times you notice out of the five reasons i gave you five reasons for losses four of them are reasons that authorize satan to come and destroy your life so when you want restoration psalm 51 please and verse 17 there are times you need to be broken brokenness suggests taking responsibility brokenness suggests saying look the way things have gone around my life there may be need for repentance there may be need for openness of heart lord i repent you spoke to me in a dream my pastor gave a message i ignored him i ignored the instructions of the authorities over me there must be need for brokenness the young man when he came to himself here's what he said let me show you what brokenness is how many hired servants has my father and i am here feeding with the swine here is brokenness i will arise and i will go to my father i cannot advance into prosperity but i can advance to the man who can help me there are two levels of advancement advancement to god then from god advancement to destiny you cannot advance to destiny when you have not advanced to god when you find yourself in defeat don't advance to money don't advance to fame don't advance to a blind restoration there is only one person who deserves your advancement i cannot go back to my wealth i cannot go back to my reputation but i can go back to my father god is speaking to someone here you were once on fire you once loved god now it looks like you have lost everything you were once a visionary businessman until you joined some so-called club or association that just derailed your values it may not be easy to get that business back overnight 
but there is a father who is waiting for you notice the bible never said the prodigal son met the father at home the father already started moving too he will not meet you at your mess but you will not meet him at home too you will meet him somewhere at the point of your obedience i will arise he says and i will go to my father when i see my father i will not just shake him and say hi dad mm -mm. i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son he says but take me as one of your servants when the father saw that there was brokenness already he didn't even talk to him about the issue again he held him and embraced him and restored the signet ring a symbol of royalty you are now back to my fold listen to me every time you lose in life businessmen hear this when your business crashes and everything goes down don't say i'm looking for money to go back uh -uh. there is only one person you go back to father abba the source the sustainer until you sort it out with god you cannot go back anywhere you used to be a man of god on fire now you backslidden prayer life zero word life zero you're not even sure you are saved you don't go back to ministry you go back to father it is from father he reallocates you to your inheritance is somebody learning now we're dealing with restoration genuine biblical pathway that leads to restoration it cannot be in the absence of brokenness from self-examination to brokenness lord i'm sorry i was not a faithful tither i was not a giver i did not support your house you gave me two billion naira i misused it jumped around with psycho fans who promised to be there now everything has gone bad don't say the ideas are still in my head it's just to get a loan i assure you you will recycle that pain again life is a patient teacher it can repeat the lessons for as long as it will take for you to learn are we together what do you gain in the place of brokenness a contrite heart what do you gain in the place of brokenness you reprioritize god above everything i love you forever i love you forever i love you forever lord Forever, I love you. Forever, I love you. Forever, Lord. Listen, let me show you the position of brokenness. This is it. Yes, I know you are a CEO, but life brings you to a point where you are no longer ashamed. When your knees can touch the ground, then your head can wear the crown again. When your knees can touch the ground in brokenness. Samson was one person who lost his estate in destiny. Let me show you how that restoration happened. His eyes, his symbol of light had been taken away. And while they put him between two pillars to mock his God, he prayed one prayer. I may not have the opportunity to live again but oh God even in death give me the honor and the privilege of valiance let me do much for you and they did not realize that while they were laughing at him his hair was coming back can I tell you this rejoice not over me my enemies no matter what happened to your yesterday I bring you a word of hope Jesus died but he only died for three days let me encourage someone here yes your prayer life has gone down yes i know things may have gone down it may have been your fault your carelessness wrong associations mistakes but let me bring you a word of hope at the scent of water at the scent of water while you are laughing at jesus who died there is an angel leaving heaven to come and open the grave while you are laughing at the dead jesus he did not die forever he only died for three days he only died for three days and while they were laughing at the one who died an angel came the hymn writer says up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph of his foes he arose the victor from the dark 
domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign if christ arose you can arise did you hear what i said businessman hear me man of god hear me those following from whatever nation watching hear me there is hope in this kingdom one of the systems of advantage is that no matter what goes wrong once there is brokenness you have planted the seed for continuity of your destiny can i give you an advice great leaders no matter how bad people are if you find genuine brokenness i show you people who are still usable but no matter how good people are if you do not find brokenness that is a disaster only waiting for time of all that Saul was he was broken when he fell before that light who art thou Lord he said I am Jesus whom thou persecutest you cannot kick against the bricks and his heart was open when Peter denied Jesus he was broken even the judas you talk about judas was so broken he did not spend the money brokenness is powerful it vetoes your fasting it vetoes your prayer you can fast you can pray you can walk in church if there is no brokenness you cannot go far with god I think we should turn this into a prayer in one minute whilst you are seated cry to the god of heaven lord grant me a broken spirit the pride and the arrogance that is rebellious towards god give me the malleability to repent the ability to not be ashamed that when there is a default in my life and my destiny and my losses come as a report card letting me know that i need to retrace my steps pain is a letter from your future to your present warning you that you need to make adjustments in your life is someone praying please pray be like that prodigal son tonight for some of you hallelujah now listen to me listen to me i still have two more points and then we're going to pray but at this juncture my spirit is fired up and i want to make an altar call you are here and you've heard me speak and whilst you heard me speak the holy ghost began to tell you it's time to win this war of destiny tonight there is nothing to be ashamed of running to jesus is like running to receive an award not running to a funeral hear me there are people up the balcony across the aisles and maybe even outside online following you know that the first restoration you need is jesus christ nobody will force you but i believe with all my heart there are people who need to make it right or there are others who say apostle i remember giving my heart to the lord but the way my life is now things have gone haywire wherever you are as i count one to five as our father will always do i like you to leave your seat wherever you are and please run and come and stand here unashamedly you are standing before jesus one are you celebrating them champions cathedral come and stand before jesus the god of your salvation please stand for space stand celebrate them as they come it's time to win that war is this how you celebrate salvation here okay those outside you can create a space for them outside because of that those outside hear me please those who are coming from outside let's have some ushers or counselors just create a space for them where they can stand keep coming come to jesus come to jesus come to jesus are you coming to jesus i have to pray for you before we continue 
and my sister some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears rebels don't come to jesus rebels run away from him so that you have come to jesus who is the lord of your salvation i like you to know that you are not a rebel young and old for some of you you've been having dreams the holy spirit has been speaking to you for some of you he carried you and brought you here do you know why more than just making heaven there are destinies that are connected to your obedience he brought you here to make you if billy graham never got born again in that crusade ground there are millions today who would not make it because of him if reinhard bonke never made it to jesus can i tell you this many of you are here like the prodigal son tonight it is within your power to come to yourself and make up your mind i'm tired of this kind of thing i cannot waste the sacrifice of jesus on the cross can i tell you this every one of us including myself had to stand before the lord of our salvation to make this decision this is not a funeral you are standing before jesus the only thing i want you to do is to mean seriously what you are saying don't come and stand here just because of emotions let it be from the depth of your heart the bible says whosoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away listen to me my brothers and my sisters you are here because there is a beautiful destiny yes because you live jesus i live i have no fear of what tomorrow brings because you lead jesus i lead today i need to pray take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me Take my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. You are the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place, take your place. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Your father is here. Like the prodigal son. When he came to his father, the father embraced him. I am still Abba. Your source, your sustainer. Please lift your right hand high to the heavens above your head and i'd like you to say this after me passionately jesus is here for some of you in your tears and your prayer is the salvation of millions for some of you in your tears and your prayer is the finances that will fund the gospel in these end times there are apostles here and prophets and evangelists and pastors and businessmen and politicians custodians of the destinies of many take seriously the decision you are making say after me lord jesus say it again passionately say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word like the prodigal child i have come to you just as i am 
unable to help myself but i believe in your love i believe you died for me i believe you shed your blood for me i believe you resurrected for me tonight i make jesus my savior my lord and my king i receive eternal life into my spirit i also receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and i declare that from today and forever i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father i present to you the ones jesus died for jesus when you hung upon that cross these ones together with all of us were worth your death your blood like trophies we bring to you abba these ones who have come back home according to the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and i declare that the power of sin of satan of hell and of the grave is broken over your life i commend you therefore to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the holy spirit that is able to make you and mature you and to make you a useful battle axe in the hands of the lord every guilt every shame every past leaves you now and leaves you forever in the name of jesus christ amen and amen. amen now very quickly before we, uh, they are returning back to their seats okay now this is what i want you to do all of you the teaching is still on so even whilst you are there please lend your attention but there is a, a counselor waving the placard just turn to the back and you will see him what i want all of you to do is just follow him together in concert as we clap for them there will be a group of people very briefly very briefly they will attend to you and you'll be back to your seat let's celebrate them champions cathedral is this the best you can do no shadow you will light up mountain you will climb up coming after me no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming out to me. Sing it one more time. There's no shadow you won't lie up, mountain you won't climb up, coming out to me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming out to me. Hallelujah. Can we take the third key? Just help those who are crying. Can we take the third key? Whilst you are taking them, counselors, just help them. Let's make it snappy so that they can be back because we are soon to pray now. The third key is knowledge. The third key that controls restoration. Are we still together? Shout hallelujah. So number one, the power of self-examination, self-evaluation. Number two, the power of brokenness. The third key that controls restoration in this kingdom is knowledge. Proverbs chapter 11, please, and verse 9. Help us, media. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. The Bible says, An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. The beeper says, But through knowledge shall the just be delivered through knowledge shall the just be delivered this is a kingdom that operates like i stated earlier operates by light is it possible is it possible to have excuse me is it possible to give the new converts the forms and then they can fill it on their seat and then when i'm done praying i can still request that all of them get back will that be fine will that be fine sir or well anyway just i just thought so that it doesn't bring any distraction praise the lord let's continue knowledge everyone say 
through knowledge shall the just be delivered one more time through knowledge shall the just be delivered there is a relationship between knowledge and victory there is a relationship between knowledge and deliverance there is a relationship between knowledge and restoration the same way ignorance leads to losses knowledge can lead to restoration isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 a scripture i love to quote so much here's what it says arise shy why for your light is come not that your light is available it's always been there but when it comes to you it sustains the power to make you arise and to shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you i wish we can have the amplified rendition the amplified says let me quote it for time it says arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new life arise from the prostration the depression that circumstances have kept you rise to a new life oh beautiful we have it here it says be radiant with the glory of the lord why for your light has come everyone say my light has come, come. prophesy it over your destiny my light has come prophesied over your family my light has come light is powerful is it not light that turns night into day what did your bible say about the night that weeping is related to the night time it endures for the night it says but joy it ties light to joy for as long as there is night in your life weeping continues but the moment illumination light comes to you then you arise in joy you need to pant after knowledge knowledge of the ways of god knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom you must access wisdom by light scripture says talking of wisdom by me kings reign and princes decree justice it says it says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness job 29 the exploits of job job was recounting the basis for his victory what was responsible for him being the greatest man in the east please give us job 29 the first four verses are we still together tonight moreover job continued his parable and said oh that i were in the months past he says as in the days when god preserved me when his candle everybody say light when his light shined upon my head and when by his light i walk through darkness there are two kinds of light you need to advance the one that shines on your head and the one that shines on your path the one that shines on your head is for knowledge the one that shines on your path is for direction job said this light was on my head and was on my path for he says as i was in the days of my youth when the secrets of the lord were upon my tabernacle in fact let's extend a bit go ahead and read when the almighty was yet with me and my children were about me when i washed my steps look at the fringe benefits of access to light i washed my steps with butter the rock poured out oil rivers of oil uh-huh it says i went out to the gate through the city when i prepared my seat in the street what happened the young men by reason of this light they hid themselves and the aged ones stood up the princes refrained talking and laid their hands on their mouth ten the nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth when the ear heard me it blessed me and when the eye saw me it gave witness to me just stop there the exploits of light you want advancement and even restoration it is it's at the mercy of the lights that you have this beautiful auditorium is well lit both your led screens the tvs and then the auditorium why because there's sufficient light if you put a candle here it's not light enough to turn the night into day you need high level spiritual illumination are we together the last key that controls restoration is the prophetic hmm. 
Isaiah 42 and verse 22 the prophetic was given by God as an instrument of restoration Isaiah 42 please pay attention we're about to pray we're about to pray Isaiah 42 and verse 22 media help us let's read together can we read ready one to read but this is a people robbed and spoiled uh-huh they are all of them snared in holes they are hid in prison houses they are taken for a prey and none say it delivereth for a spoil and none say yet restore restoration must be spoken to happen it says they are taken for a prey and there is no prophetic voice that can speak and say restore restoration second kings chapter 6 and verse 1 a classic expression of restoration hallelujah someone's life is about to change and the sons of the prophet said to elisha watch this now behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight or small for us let us go so this was an intention to go forward but something happened are we together let us go we pray thee unto jordan the place of breakthrough and take thence every man a beam and let us make us a place there where we may dwell and he said go ye when he gave that instruction one said be content i pray thee to go with thy servants and he answered i will go so he went with them and when they came to jordan they cut down wood the bible says but a tragedy happened listen carefully now but as one was felling a beam the axe head fell into the water and he cried and said alas master i am in trouble i've lost something now my sincere intention to go forward has brought me trouble and that axe was borrowed watch the prophetic the man of god answered and said calm down you are safe the prophetic is still within your reach where fell it ha, the lord is speaking to someone where fell the relationship where fell the favor where fell the open door and he showed him the place please keep the scripture and he cut down a stick and cast it in theater and the iron did swim and he said take it up to thee and he put down his hand and took it i will restore through the instrument of the prophetic an axe head heavier than water but under a certain condition i i i prophesy to someone in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god you now see what happens when our father baba deboy would stand and say in the name of jesus casually speaking everything you have lost let it be restored and people say amen and people return with testimonies and say my child who has been missing for 10 years let me tell you this i know that the prophetic may have been abused here and there but when the prophetic is administered within the balance of scripture it is powerful no man can rise beyond a certain threshold until the prophetic lifts you i tell you this i had the honor and the privilege of meeting our father again not too long and when he was praying and speaking over my life i knew it was coming from the depth of his heart he sent everybody out of the room and began to speak from the depth of his heart i knew he was not just advising he was programming realities can i tell you this 
as powerful as Jesus is, he walked under a closed heaven for 30 years until a prophet opened his heavens. Your Jesus was under a closed heaven for 30 years until he met a prophet called John the Baptist. Even if you are a midwife, when you are pregnant and you are about to give birth, another midwife will have to help you. Hear me? This is where the arrogance of our generation has pegged men. You can respect yourself, but you cannot honor yourself. Honor is conferred by another. Fire is about to fall in this place. Listen to me. Many of you have lost. Please take it hard for me. Listen carefully. There is a prophetic word that I want to bring and then we'll pray. I will not take too long. We'll be done shortly. Please be sensitive now. I just sense angelic activities in this place. Nehemiah chapter 5 and verse 11. Nehemiah 5 Champions Cathedral The city of Wari South of the Niger Hear the word of the Lord He said restore I pray you to them even when even when are you reading with me not tomorrow restore even this day their lands their vineyards their olive yards their houses a hundred part of the money and of the corn and of the wine and of the oil that he exact of them listen please look up Every time, many of you are businessmen, many of you read economies, there is always, whenever there is a taking, it leaves someone and goes to the hand of another. Is that true? Who did your breakthrough when it left you? Where did it go? Because the Bible says, when you catch a thief. He doesn't only restore, he restores tenfold. Ezekiel 37, I was taken, was still buttressing on this prophecy. This is the prophetic word the Lord gave me tonight, Nehemiah. But hear me, the hand of the Lord was upon me. We are reading Ezekiel 37. He carried me out in the spirit and set me down. And he showed me a valley full of bones. Bones means they were once an army, but something happened. He caused me to pass by them. They were very many. And they were very dry. That means they had been there a long time. Verse 3. He said unto me, Son of man. Champions Cathedral. Can this business leave? Can this family leave? Can this anointing be restored? The prophet was honest. He said, Lord, with this situation I'm seeing, only thou knowest. And then he spoke to him. And he said to me, prophesy. He said to me, prophesy. He said to me, prophesy. Verse 5. Cause breath to enter you so that you will live. Verse 6. Beautiful. And I will lay sinews and I will do all of these things. Go to verse 7. That's what I'm looking for. He said, prophesy. And this verse says, so I. He said, deliver. So I. I'm here today because God sent me. If he says prophesy, then we must prophesy. If he says restoration, then we must decree it. Are you ready to pray? Father. I step into everything I have lost. Everything that has left me, left my family. Lift your voice and pray. Spiritually, financially, in ministry, in business, in career. Are you praying? Are you praying? Inside, outside.
prophesy. RCCG Champions Cathedral The City of Worry Lift your voice and declare De la Parus que parite catabarusia Que brande que te le que te bracata Restore Restore the grace Restore the favor Restore the lifting Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. My God. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, the lift up of my head, but now, oh Lord, had a shield for me, my glory, you lift my head. I like you. Please listen. Listen. There are few. We have a few minutes. I don't intend to delay us, especially because of our fathers. But the hand of God is upon me now. Praise the name of the Lord. Hear me. There are people here, and I'm seen by the Spirit. There are people here. There are yokes that have tied and kept individuals. Listen to me. And families. The Bible declares that now the Lord is that spirit. And that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There are individuals here. The only thing growing in your life is your age. Nothing else is growing. I want to pray for you right now. Listen. As I pray for you, the power of God is going to come upon you. We may not be able to do that for everybody, but I want you to bring them out here. Let's just have a few ushers. Whether you are an usher or not, just join them. There's a reason I want to pray for them. We can, because this night, except God is not God, that whatever has held you down, in the name of Jesus, it must give way. Are we together? I stretch my hands right now. At the count of three, I declare that anyone here under the sound of my voice who has been tied down by witchcraft, tied down by all kinds of yokes, I join my faith with the fathers of faith and in the name of Jesus at the count of three I want you to shout that name Jesus don't come out at random don't come out at random the power of God will bring you out in the name of Jesus just bring those under the anointing one two you shout Jesus three be delivered right now by the power of the Holy Spirit I decree and declare under the anointing Jesus the name that is
is above all names. Bring those under the anointing. Skeparukata. Let them go. In the name of Jesus. Let them go. Release their destinies. Release their destinies. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Every plot that is not of God. I come by the rod of the higher priesthood. Let there be deliverance now. Let there be emancipation now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. I'm praying for you. There are families. Zechariah chapter 1. From verse 18. It says son of man. What seest thou? And he said, I saw four horns. 19. He said, these are the horns that have scattered Judah. Your praise scattered Israel. Your covenant scattered Jerusalem. Your peace. There are horns that fight families. I'm praying again that every power sitting on anyone's destiny you're going to shout that name again in the name of jesus be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now release families release destinies release families release destinies release families release destinies we cost you by the god of heaven we cost you by the god of joshua that rides upon the wings of the wind Hear me. Please listen. If there is any family here that has been tied down in one position, as I declare upon you, I like you to begin to receive and say, I'm moving forward. I'm making progress. I declare right now, every family that has been tied down, in the name of Jesus, go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. No delay. Go forward. Restoration. In the name of Jesus. Let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hope is rising in this place tonight. Hear me. Listen. All of you who are in front here. Listen. Hold on. Everyone in front here, I declare that everything that has tied you by the God of heaven, I command it to leave you now. Leave your family now. If you are in business here, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Alas, master, it was borrowed. In the name that is above all names. Everything that has tied you down to bring reproach to the name of the Lord upon your life. I stand here upon this exalted altar and I declare to you, come out of every debt now. Come out of every loss now. Come out of every debt now. Come out of every loss now. I speak to you, advance. Advance, advance, go forward, advance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me, please. Just two, three minutes, and I'm done. The Bible speaks about a man in the book of Esther called Mordecai. Mordecai once saved the life. There are two people who did well. 
but were not rewarded in scripture number one was joseph he helped the wine presser to interpret his dream and he said when you are restored please tell the king i'm innocent the man added two years to joseph's pain a man's memory a man's forgetfulness can multiply your times of pain until god as an act of his mercy brought a dream to pharaoh and the wine presser said i remember my wrong the second person was mordecai he saved the life of ahasuerus the king over 127 provinces and mordecai was not rewarded but when his time came the bible says that night could not the king sleep i'm saying this because god is about to open the book of remembrance hear me there are some of you who have been part of the success story of many people you have contributed to the rising of many you have helped to take shame out of many but you have been forgotten in the name of jesus i bow my knees to the god of my covenant don't kneel down i'm the one kneeling down i pray for you between now and the next three months if god be god be remembered in the name of jesus be remembered in the name of jesus be remembered in the name of jesus that night could not a hazard of sleep and he said bring me the chronicles when they brought him the chronicles he saw where mordecai saved his life and yet was not rewarded and he said who is in the chamber her man was there and he said what shall be done to the man who does this her man thought he was the one and so out of the abundance of his selfishness he gave a recommendation he said do that immediately can i speak to you there are some of you who are at this conference it looks like you are nobody's ignored but i stand by the grace of god and i declare may what happened to mordecai happen to you yeah. hear me the bible says let god arise and let his enemies be scattered when haman coordinated the honor of mordecai he returned back broken to his wife and he said wife look at what happened to me and he said uh -uh. mordecai is a jew esther is a jew you are in trouble he said this one has come to get you because there is a covenant that protects them can i speak to you anybody that has mocked your god and fought your covenant may what happened to her man happen to them in the name of jesus christ i want you to go back home today with this consciousness that the lord has restored to me both things and years you are barren here trusting god for the fruit of the womb i want you to not just expect one child expect twins expect triplets in the name of jesus christ and may i lend my voice with the pastor and the leaders to encourage you please do not miss tomorrow morning session for anything it's a conference it takes a sacrifice but every session is worth your while and worth your coming open up your heart and ensure that you are around and invite as many if there is no space if you have to climb the roof climb and sit there in the days of jesus christ everybody who came had something to go back with for tonight may the lord bless you may the lord honor you in the name of jesus you will not need to tell people you came to church the testimonies that begin to happen will tell people that you met god in the name of jesus christ god bless you and see you tomorrow